follow you and now wish you will oh Lord I will do in what you desire Lord I desire Yes, what you desire, Lord, I desire Bye. 
righteousness in holiness all our days is we will worship you in righteousness in All our day is we will worship you in righteousness in holiness. All our day.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank you mighty God for everything you are, oh God we thank you for the realms of glory, thank you for the Blessed is the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship your holy name, hallelujah, ha <laughs> Outpourings, your glory now, this blessed baptism, your Holy Ghost and power, your heavenly ministry. Blessed is the name of the Lord our God. Everybody shout it, yes. I am holy thine. For I am holy thine. No riches of earth could ever compare to you, glory so divine. Thank you, mighty God, for the wonderful works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Most High God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, praise shall be in my mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Just let the glory of heaven and the praise of heaven flow through you now. Come on, let the glory of heaven. Let the glory of heaven. Come on, his house is a place of glory. Come on. His house is a place of praise. Come on, 
Rasta Frateo Prai. Mambando, you see Kayala Mambari by Yeru Mushabra Mamanea. Come on, Mama, say Prada. Come on, Messi Karama. Do something on those drums right there. Come on, Brasa the Karama. Come on. Come on, the keys. Come on, Brasa Prada. Come on, man. Oh, we bless and praise you, Lord, for the great outpouring, the great moving of your spirit and power, O God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> to give you, to supply to you, to give you skill, to give you divine ability. You have to ultimately come to a place where human ability isn't good enough for you anymore. You don't want human ability. You want divine ability and an anointing will come upon you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. All you guys out here in Southern California, you've sat in a classroom way too long. Way too long. You sit in classroom way too long. You've been educated beyond anything that you ever want to be. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's time. It's time to go ahead and get raptured over into the rounds of glory now. Come on now. It's time to do something different with your life. Hallelujah. 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 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Thank you for the great outpourings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Well, let me just tell you, and when you begin to taste of the realms of divine glory that's available to you, you won't want anything else. When you taste of this heavenly realm that you can walk in, the, that joy unspeakable and full of glory can really even, don't really describe. You really don't describe it. You won't have to have anybody describe, uh, tell you what to do when it comes to uh, worship him, worshiping him and hallelujah, falling at his feet and being broken before him. Uh, be delight. It'll be that which you just do. It's just the natural response to things. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm just so happy to be here tonight with you. And you know, the thing, about, the thing about the realms of the anointing, it brings to us the life of God, and there is a wonderful pursuit that the Spirit of the Lord puts on the inside of us. There is this Holy Ghost covetousness. There's this Holy Ghost passion there's this Holy Ghost zeal to pursue everything that Father has and made available. And what happens is then that puts you this constant press to break into a realm of something far greater and far more glorious and far more excellent and far more beautiful and far more heavenly and far more uh, that which describes the Spirit of the Lord and the working of His mighty power. Oh, karada shikara mumpandeya. Ah, to just sit aside. Hallelujah, on the sideline. Just let things pass by. That's lukewarmness, you see. God said, get in or get out. Hallelujah. But if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Hallelujah. Men pursue excellence in the natural things. And it seems like a very few pursue excellence in the things of the Spirit. But we think better things of you. Hallelujah. We've seen what God is doing in the, in the nations of the earth and how that people who have only been walking with the Lord six months to a year are always already flowing in tongues, interpretation of tongues, already flowing in prophecy that is beautiful, amazing. They've got rings in their nose, rings in their ears. They've got 15 different colors in the hair. But my goodness, grace of the authority of heaven coming out of them is enough to get you excited about what Father is at doing. Too many people sit on the sidelines willing to just let it all go by and never taking a hold of that which passion, only passion, only zeal can possess. Hallelujah. 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 I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth after Friday, last, to see, I don't want to think it was last Friday, but the Friday before, that every one of you already flowing in tongues, interpretation of tongues, if you weren't already before, because there's no way you could sit in a meeting like that and not immediately have it unless you're just stuck. And if you're stuck, God will give you a miracle. Yeah. But you've got to be wanting a miracle yes. more than anything else. Hallelujah. Some people, some people just need to cut stuff off. They need to cut stuff off. The Lord said, if, you're, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. 
And some people need to just cut their TV off. Somebody need to just, some people just need to cut their other interests off, their other activities. Cut it off. If it isn't causing you to pursue the things of the realms of heaven, come on, just cut it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, man. God's got something. My Father's got something so much bigger for you. I, I've discovered that as you refuse the things that this world has and that, that, the, the, that belongs to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, God gives you the things that heaven has. Hallelujah. They've always been available. So I just want to have a little bit of Holy Ghost music here going along with me, if I could, until I can say it's enough. I want you to just go ahead and give yourself to Hallelujah. Let God, the Holy Spirit, take your music to another place. You got a monsikeri now. You got to get a monsikiata. Bypass the self consciousness and your own human ability and begin to flow in another realm of confidence and boldness that God will give you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when, when you want to move out in God, if you want to move out in God, if you want to move out in God in any dimension of the things of the Spirit, you're going to have to be able to understand a place of boldness and confidence, something that God gives to us because He's removed all condemnation. Hallelujah. And the harabako roshisha. Hallelujah. Arebate yahaya. Hallelujah. Abrasusa. Come on, people. Come on, people. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can get past yourself, you can have God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. You can be seated. You know, I, I'm gonna have a. We're gonna we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet. We're gonna meet on uh, Friday night. And we just cer certainly hope you come, because I won't see you for probably right at close to a month. I won't be ministering to you for close to a month. So, just play a little bit, son. I just want to hear you play. I want to hear you flow in the anointing. I want to hear. I want you know. I'd love to be more involved on some of the things you guys are doing. I want to be, I'd love to be more involved in some of the things you guys are doing. And so, because, you know, if, if, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we're going to just, we'll miss out on, on, a, on a pursuit that only the heart that God gives us and a hookup with the Holy Ghost that we have an opportunity to participate with will allow us to enter into. We want to do things out of the realms of the natural and they're never going to, it ain't never going to satisfy supernatural there. Uh, I pray that you don't come understand. If you don't take a hold of what's made available by the Holy Ghost, there's going to be nothing more than a life constantly being overwhelmed by circumstances and situations at best. And you'll never know this wonderful, glorious rest. You'll never understand what it means to be more than a conqueror and to live in the realms of faith. You never know what it under, you'll never know that which Father has made available to us to supply of the Spirit, to live in divine health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To live in divine blessings and prosperity, divine perfection and divine protection, and divine provision. You'll be just tossed to and fro. You'll just be overwhelmed, overcome, going from one issue to the next issue, and in between you'll have a couple of mountaintop experiences of God because He loves us and His mercy endures forever. Huh? But God's looking for some people to allow the things of the Spirit to be perfected in their life. They, God allow, you just allow God to develop you in the realms of the Holy Ghost so that you'll walk around bearing witness of Him and of His resurrection, that you'll be one of the people who look just like heaven. And too many people have got a mixture. There's too much conflict going on in their life. And I, I pray that you just let the Spirit of the Lord hide you away in the realms of divine power and glory. It's such a beautiful place. Jesus died for, and rose again for us to be able to have this realm, to live in the realms of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not lives in the realms of complaint and sorrow and worry and try to figure it out with your own head. My goodness, that, that's just dead. It's just dead. 
I mean, you know, the Lord just isn't going to show just one or two, three people this wonderful rest and leave everybody else in the dark. Is it available for everybody, but it's all you have to press in for it. You have to want it more than anything else. When you accept the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, you accept the truth of his word, you accept the, empower, accept the empowerment that he's given, you, by virtue of just accepting those things and living with them, you're rejecting the lies. And when you begin to just, when you, you know, it doesn't take much to stand against sin and iniquity. It doesn't take much, dear people. It's actually pretty easy. Hallelujah. I know it comes at you pretty hard to start off with, but it gets real easy because what happens is when you stand up against the stuff that's coming at you, and it may not even be uh, sin, you know, it may just simply be doubt and unbelief and discouragement. And you learn how not to yield your members to those things. I'm going to tell you right now, this is far more than an ideology based around ideas. You begin to enter into a realm of glory that you just don't want to live without because otherwise you're just basically on the outside of the place looking in, the, looking in, looking in the window, hoping you wish you could be in there. How do you get in? Where's the door? You walk around the building a couple times looking for the door, can't find the door, just staring in the window. Wow, it must be beautiful to be inside that room where the glory is. That place called relationship with the Lord Jesus. It isn't. Look, people make it difficult. God, God didn't make it difficult. He made it so easy that anybody can get in. A woman who's married, who's married five times and living with a, a man who's not her husband. He, look how easy he made it for her to get in and have rivers of glory flowing out of her. Amen. Just recognize who I am, receive the gift, and go. Amen. I mean, you know what I'm saying. You can just, they complicate everything. They take, the, they take the simplest things and make it so complicated that they don't even know what they're saying. Huh? They take the trivial and make it, you know, monumental. You know what I'm saying? They, they turn experts at turning molehills into mountains instead of the other, other way around. So I, mean, I, just, I just want you to be able to be converted, not become like little children. Try, try, just understand you don't have to make it so hard. Hallelujah. For the most part, has an interpretation with it every time it's uttered. Hallelujah. Produces an inspiration. It produces an outworking that God wants his people to begin to enjoy here in Southern California. Amen. Hallelujah. Got to be somebody somewhere that wants to move into Pentecost. Got to be somebody somewhere who wants to do signs, wonders, and miracles. People who want to do them just start doing them. Everybody else is sitting over in, called, in, over in the fear room. They're in the panic room. They're just sitting over there in the panic room waiting for a day. A day's never going to come because you over waiting for a day of doubt and unbelief. You're waiting for a day for God to do something he's already done. Don't do that. In Jesus' mighty name, don't do that. This isn't playtime. It's what people are learning how to do at an early age. Have a starfish book out and trace starfishes. You know, I, I, people grow up doing that. Hallelujah. Huh? It's about time people grab a hold of themselves. Grab a hold of your kids. Amen. Amen. Grab a hold of your thoughts. Grab a hold of your life. Amen. Come on, people. The, the world is, the world is in, in, in desperate need. We human resource limited. We not finance limited. We human resource limited. And I'm just so earnest to see every person in this place raised up in signs and wonders and miracles. And, you know, there's so, so many people that should be here tonight that they're not here tonight. That's a sad thing. I'm not going to talk about that because that's another issue. But you're here tonight, and why, if, why should you show up, you know, in the body and your spirit be absent? I don't know which is better. I'm with you in spirit or I'm with you in body. I don't know. Maybe the being in spirit, being with you in spirit is probably a little bit better than just your body showing up. Amen. People, there, if we're going to contend for the faith, then there is, a, there is a place that we give ourselves to going after signs, wonders, and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Every day we wake up, every day, with a sensitivity toward the Holy Spirit. 
allowing God to take us into a realm of faith that is only found by moving in the things of his joy and of his peace. You know, one of, one, one of the wonderful things that the Lord told me and, and revealed to me about holiness and about walking in holiness was just simply walking in his love because it's the chief characteristic of holiness. And you know, when you think about this, it is such a blessing to live full of love and happy all day. It's a sign and a wonder. You know, the Lord spoke to me and said, the world can't know. The world can't know you, but you can certainly be something that is a sign and a wonder to them. You can certainly be something to them that is absolutely a, 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 an, a fantastic display of something that goes beyond what they can figure out, like a galaxy, okay? Like looking at the stars in the sky. Can, you, can somebody help her? Can somebody help her? Or do I just, must I do it? Just help. Come on, just kind of throw in there. She's, little ones still need to get under control. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I, I can't do it all tonight. I would love to do it all tonight. But I can't do it all. I can't. You know, I'd love to hop over in your spot and go ahead and give a tongue. And hop over in your spot and give an interpretation. Then I'd love to hop in over your spot and go and miss work a miracle. And then hop over in your spot and do a gift of healing. I'd love to hop over then in your spot and go ahead and give a word of knowledge. Huh? And then hop over in your spot and go ahead and give an exhortation. But then I, we wouldn't be the body, would we? We'd just be, I just basically, you know, it's like the guy playing all the basses. You know what I'm saying? Papa wants to bring us into a place of connectivity instead of just crazy isolations. Come on, people, now it ain't that hard. It's pretty easy. What God commands. Now, I know it's pretty easy if you're flowing in the Holy Ghost, been following Jesus around three years to come into a place of unity. But if you're living in Southern California, unity is hard to come by. Unity is in great, in, in, in great demand. Uh, it's, 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 it's rare. It's, because it's a place of the Holy Ghost. It's a place of the moving of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's good, son. You probably need some help. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unity. Unity and, and agreement and connectivity is something that is so important. You're going to have to learn how to do it. And you're not going to, you're not going to ever learn how to do it so long as you've got pride in your eyes. Huh? <laughs> so long as you've got arrogancy in your spirit. You're never going to learn how to do it. You're going to have to go ahead. You know, I, I believe first and foremost people need to just learn how to give themselves over to the Holy Ghost and let it fill you up with so much love that you love, learn how to love the unlovely. It's the first little indicator that something's going on now. You got a special interest in the unlovely, huh? You, huh? That's right. You got a special compassion for everybody around you. You know, that grumpy and saying "ung" and you know the "ug" and you know a few other little grunts and groans when you're around those folks. You know, it's not like you're just hard to have any time to talk with them because you're so such a special case and they're in a bad case or whatever, a worse case. It, it's just you begin to give yourself over to this realm of love, and then after a while of walking in this love. You know, that's one of the most important things in terms of moving in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up in your most holy faith. Somebody said, I've been praying in the Holy Ghost and they don't move in love and they don't have this loving generosity and compassion. I'm saying, I don't know what it is you've been moving in, but it wasn't the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't know what it is you were praying in, but I guarantee it wasn't the Holy Ghost. Because God says something and he gives results. You do what he says to do, do it the way he says to do it, and you're going to immediately have his results. You do not have to wait 20 years. Praise God. You don't have to wait two years. You don't even have to wait two months. You know, we'll be in China here in a little bit. Towards the end of the year, we've made a commitment to go and be in, in, in some of the different places in China where the leaders are being raised up. And I want you to think about it. I want you to go ahead and consider the reality that um, these, most of these guys have only been saved for six months. Okay? Are you with me? Most of these guys, these are the leaders now. These are the pastors. They've been saved for six months. Are you listening to me? Okay, while, while people are sitting around for how long? And they still don't know how to move in the word of knowledge, and they still don't know how to move in tongues and interpretation of tongues in the meeting. They still don't know really how to enter into the realms of the spirit and begin to praise from the depths of the heart and their emotion. It's still just all locked up within the physical realm, as it were. It hasn't really moved past the concepts of ideas and move down into an emotion and a passion. Come on, people, I want you to just I want you to consider with me 
You know, if we do what God says to do, we're going to get his results. If we're not getting his results, then we've got to back up and say, wait a minute, I must not be doing what he said. I must have missed it somewhere. Somebody said, do you think we've missed whole paragraphs? I said, no, whole books. You think we missed whole paragraphs in the Bible? No, whole chapters. Hello. Why don't somebody just go ahead and give it tongue and interpretation to real quick, just to break things up a little bit. Because some of you look pretty pale. You look, look, some of you looking pretty pale, huh? Come on now, someone's just going to give a prophecy. Just go ahead. Let's, let's, because as you begin to move, as people get to move in the things of the Spirit, as the body of Christ, as soon as you begin to give yourself to more connectivity, every manifestation of the Holy Spirit builds things up and it gets bigger and bigger. And then you get to explode into a realm of divine power and glory that's always been writing right there for you, but you've never participated with it. Why don't people participate with the things of the Spirit? Many times they've got other priorities, or they've got fear, or they've got condemnation, or they've got just out-and-out -out sin in their life. You know, that'll keep you from flowing every time. But, I mean, I just, once again, think better things of you. That, that certainly isn't the situation here. <laughs> think about it. I want you to think about it. Somebody, I had some pastors while I was gone, they were asking me, you know, about why is it in third world countries there's so many more people that easily get saved, and and easily get healed, and signs and wonders and miracles take place. I mean, when you third world person gets saved, I mean, it's it. Like, they stay saved, you know what I'm saying? They get born again. They, they're not back and forth. You don't know whether they're going to be there next year. They're in for life. It's just amazing. And people ask, you know, why is it that that happens? Why is it that there's so many signs and wonders? And, I, you know, I, I've heard, and I was sitting around with a number of different pastors and ministers, and they were saying all the various different theories of why they thought and what was going on, this thing and that thing, the other thing. But I want to just understand something with me. I just want, you to help, I want to help you understand a couple of things here, okay? If you can just be quiet for just a few minutes and listen to me, I can help you understand a couple of things here. And then if you would participate with it and do these things, then all of a sudden you can have them. Otherwise, if you don't participate, everybody wants to be hearers. Everyone wants to be hearers. You know, I would, just, I would, like, I would like everybody to move from... In being hearers to speakers. Could you imagine speaking the word over yourself all day long? Uh, yeah. You just have to excuse, excuse me, I'm so drunk in the Holy Ghost, I don't even know how I'm standing here. <laughs> just be very honest with you, I'm just caught way over in glory. Hallelujah. I've been just living in this place all day long. Don't plan on don't plan on leaving it anytime soon. Praise God. Hallelujah. I like people to move from hearers. No, the hearers aren't justified. The hearers are not justified, right? Did you know that? The doers. But you're supposed to both speak and do the word. Did you know that? But I would like to, I think it would be a great improvement and a great ad advancement if people just started speaking the word over their life. Can you imagine what it would like? It would be like if you just spoke the word over your life all day long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Parabol said, keep it. Now what would happen if you not only spoke the word over your life, but you do it? Because there are a lot of people who can speak things out, but they don't do them. They speak it out, but they don't ever do it. They talk about miracles, but they don't do miracles. Oh, they did one last month. I mean, I'm just glad that God isn't in such short supply. They had a prophecy last year. You know, give me a break, dear people. I mean, I can understand that you've got to have some place of building things up in your life, you know, but it's about time to be hungry, covetous for prophecy. Well, I've noticed that everybody around me pretty much has a house, okay, because they were covetous for a house that a tent wouldn't do. I noticed that. Did you notice that? A tent wouldn't do. Um, living in a, living at the residence inn wouldn't do. Um... Living in the back seat of the car wouldn't do. They were covetous for a house, and they went and they basically put their life and their and their blood and their being on the line so that they could have themselves a house because they coveted it. But all those people, I haven't seen them prophesying lately. You know, if you covet to prophesy, you know what you're going to do. You're going to prophesy. Did you know that Acts two seventeen says He poured out His Spirit upon all flesh? Hallelujah. That helps to build your faith out a little bit. Hallelujah. Of course, if you just hear it, it ain't going to do much for you because you're not going to ever be justified. It's never going to develop faith in you. But all of a sudden, if you started speaking it, praise God, and you started going around and telling people, did you know the Spirit was poured out upon all flesh? Hallelujah. On everybody, not just a few persons, not just a Samuel, not just a Moses, not just an Aaron, not just a Daniel, 
but the Holy Ghost was poured out upon all flesh. You begin to start talking about it. Who knows? Before long, you say, wait a minute, how about my flesh? Huh? <laughs> what if you, if you begin, if all of a sudden faith began to rise in your spirit to such a place? Hold up, hold up, hold up. What seems to be the problem here? What seems to be the problem here? Pull yourself together. Okay? Amen. So, and then you begin to go, wait a minute. Spirit of God's been poured out on all flesh. I've been preaching this and saying for a while. People tell me, I, how, you know, you start talking to them about things about the Word of God. They say, oh, I know that. No, you don't know that. You don't know that. If you do that, you'd know that. You know, people, oh, yeah, I've heard that. Well, I bet you have. <laughs> yeah, I bet you have. But you really haven't heard it to where the faith was produced. Because a faith will come when you hear it, when you hear it properly, when you're ready to do it. See, you can look at Peter. He was standing on the edge of the boat. He was ready to do it. So he said, speak the word. It wasn't, he wasn't going to, Christ Jesus' words were not going to fall upon, as it were, deaf fears. It wasn't going to fall. His word was not going to fall upon an unwilling vessel. And you know what? The Lord searches the heart, and he knows. He looks at, he can look, he can look at my heart, he can look at your heart. Because Christ Jesus stands in his church right now and he tries the reins in the hearts of every person. You know, and he knows whether or not you're going to do it. He's, he's got that all, well, he's got the day right now. You can, you're not going to pull with the, no wool over his eyes. And so the reality of it is, people, you're going to have to, you and I, we're going to have to get earnest about obeying God. We're going to have to stand on the edge of the boat saying, Lord, speak the word only and I'm going to come. I'm going to risk my life. I'm going to do something that is impossible for the mind to even consider is that you can do. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord was speaking to me the other day and I was looking out over the water and the water actually turned in my, in my view. I began to see the water as dry ground. And in the Spirit of the Lord began to say, help me understand, I want you to be able to see it within the realms of the miracle condition that I'll prepare it to be or that I've described it should be or that I've declared you have the ability to function in or the results that you know I've intended to give. Whether it's a person blind, you can already, if you begin to walk with the Holy Spirit in such a way because you're pressing into this, you can see someone who's blind. blind. You can already see in the Spirit that they see. It's, it's so real to you. It's already so real to you before you ever even pray. People, then we don't have to talk about how that you prophesied one time last month or how you moved in and somebody got healed one time last year and that you could count on your right hand how many people have been saved through your ministry since you've been walking with God. You want to move past this. Come on now. Come on. And you're not going to move past it until you get intimate with Jesus. Anybody who's intimate with Jesus has moved past this. Those who are not intimate with Jesus have not moved past this. Here we go again. Backsliding on me. Backsliding on me. Backsliding on me in the meeting. Huh? As long as I'm here hovering over you doing right, so as to turn my back, you're back to doing the other thing. This is just way too, this is way too common and ordinary among God's people. You know, I was just reading the other day, just so overwhelmed, you know, by just the very thought of the fact that Joshua leads the people of Israel so willing, a generation so willing to step into the power and the glory of majesty of Almighty God. Here, let me just minister to her and see if I can deliver her from this oppressive spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, my goodness, you know. Because um, it really is. I mean, I don't look at it anything differently. Because for me, the world is a spiritual world, not made of make-believe but of real actions and, and real consequences and real, that are based upon choices and decisions. It was like I was talking to you on Sunday night. What if you were able to create the world uh, that you were going to live in and every decision and every choice decided what that world looked like? Would your world be full of hate? Would it be full of lust and evil thinking and evil things? Or would your world be that which the Holy Spirit teaches us uh, about the ways of the Father and the things that Father has ordained and established. Your life is made up of your decisions and your choices that you're making continually every day. You're going to have to decide to go ahead and live by the Word and walk in the Spirit. And, and it really is in that order because if you don't take a hold of the freedom that is in Christ Jesus and be liberated and say, once you know it, once you know that these signs follow them that believe, you speak with new tongues, hallelujah, you cast out devils, speak with new tongues, and you understand that the body of Christ is the, one, the, is the group of people 
that function in all the manifestation of the Spirit, you're empowered and you just start doing it. Other people are cogitating. They're sitting around wondering what day it's going to happen. No, I'm not going to wonder what day it's going to happen. I'm going to start doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. I've been modeling for some of you for a very, very long time. And it still hasn't really gotten very far. We want you to go with it, the people. We want you to stop nodding your head and start moving your mouth by the inspiration and the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because reality of it is, you know, when you get the right kind of connectivity, and I'm going to go back to talking a little bit more about this, why is it that third world countries are able to receive miracles? Why is it that people there are able to do signs and wonders on the love scale that, you know, if you're an Episcopal, if you're Episcopal, uh, uh, Episcopalian priest, you can do great signs and wonders in third world countries. If you're a Baptist, just a Baptist, a common, ordinary, backslidden, almost Baptist, you can do signs and wonders and miracles in third world countries. And by and large, it's because of the connectivity issue. People look at you and they don't have the distrust and they don't have all these other things that run through the Western mind of suspicion and criticism. You tell them that you've come in the name of Jesus. You have the power of God to open up the eyes of the blind. And they go, they go, okay, open up my eyes then. They're ready. And, and it, there isn't, it's just not a patronizing response. It's, you know, you know it's, it's like they're, they're laying hold on it. And we're going to understand how to humble ourselves. We're going to have to understand how to walk into a place of lowliness and meekness which is never going to come until you learn how to walk in divine love. I'm just telling you right now, if you're not, the first thing is divine love. It's, the, it's what it means to walk in holiness. It's what it means to walk in the Spirit. It's the result of building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. It is the chief characteristics of God. It's the chief characteristic of God's people. You'll know them because, then you'll know they're my disciples because of their love one for another. You understand he that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein is their love made perfect. You can tell who somebody has been dwelling in God because they've got walking around in matured and perfected love. And what's going to result out of that then is going to be the whole jury section has come to falling down. Lord Jesus, help us. What's going to come as a result of that is that you're going to begin to now understand the, the wisdom and the insight that it takes to walk in lowliness and meekness. Jesus is, real, is the love of God made manifest, and he, he wants us to come and learn of Him. And when we come and learn of Him, He's going to teach us lowliness and meekness. And those are the ingredients of unity and togetherness and connectivity, and you're never going to have it otherwise. You're going to have independence. You're going to be independent. You're going to be this one big, gigantic, mega brain floating around in the universe. <laughs> You know, I saw, I saw one of those Star Trek movies that it was like all these big mega brains and they like were made up this universe. And I think there's too many people, you know, that sit around even in the church. They're just these big mega heads, you know, mega brains, mega minds, you know. And listen, that, that ain't going to get you anywhere. Father, do, Father wants to enlarge your heart, not enlarge your head. Hallelujah. He wants to liberate you so that you have freedom to flow around him, that you're just comfortable flowing around him, that you're so encouraged, you're so confident. Do I look like I'm struggling or having a hard time right now? I'm not, but some of you look like you're having a very difficult time. You look like you're having an awkward moment. Some of you look like you're having an awkward moment. That is self-consciousness and fear and all the stuff that belong to the human realm. And we would really love you, love that for you to be converted, become a new creation, and be filled with the Holy Ghost and understand it is a whole new disposition. It's a heavenly disposition. You do not look like you're in a human condition when you've got a heavenly disposition. And we're here to teach you. We're really here to help you spend all the time that you need. But reality of it is, is what you're going to really What's really going to be absolutely essential is that you run head in, head first into Christ Jesus. Amen. That you run into a relationship with God and to begin to participate in something that you need no one to teach you, that no one really can, really no one can teach you, you know, what God is teaching us. And that is to come and dwell and abide in Him. That I actually have the right and I had the privilege to come and dwell in Him. You know, what I'm speaking to you is spirit and life. And some of you can't even, I hardly know the first thing that I've even said up to this point. That is sad. It's sad because you, you, you've got to understand there's got to be a break point where you're saying, okay, no more am I going to live after the flesh. 
If you live after the flesh, you shall die. No more am I going to walk in the realm of just boistering every day my self-interest. Uh, Papa would like you to do the opposite. He wants you to deny your self-interest. You can't walk all the way through the day, living out your life, basically boistering your own self-interest, walking in your own understanding, being taught by all these skilled manipulators how to manipulate people and do things, make sales, you know, get, get your boss to like you more, how to be successful, how to dress for success, how to try for success, how to talk for success. And it's all a bunch of lies and garbage because then you're going to end up being a liar, giving yourself to a spirit of a lie. No matter who you're saying you're doing it for or what you're saying your motives are, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to learn how to walk in the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to learn how to walk in purity. You're going to have to learn how to walk in truth. You're going to have to learn how to walk in honesty. Listen to me. It's just it's such a sad thing to think about how that Joshua walks in, does such great exploits. The people of God are so sold out. And then within one generation, one generation, really, after the last of the elders had died, the guys who were around about the age of Joshua, and a second, really a second generation removed from the generation that inherited Israel, they were already acting like Sodom and Gomorrah. They were. They, was, they did the same exact things. By and large, when the, when the Levite and his concubine went into the town of Benjamin, you've read about it, right? You saw what happened. It was almost like reading the story of Sodom and Gomorrah when the, the two uh, ministers of the Lord, which, you know, the, which, you know, when God went down into Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the, the Benjamites acted pretty much towards the Levite and his concubine as the Sodom and Gomorrahites did towards the two messengers from the Lord that entered into, you no, know, into, entered into Lot's house. You know, it's so sad. Why is it that people are, are, why is it the human realm, no matter what it is, it seems like that they have an encounter with God. Why is it that so very few go on with the Lord? I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to shut up, you know. I'm going to lift up my voice a little bit louder, and I'm going to say, what's wrong with you weirdos, you know? What's wrong? How can, they, how can you possibly have an encounter with God and be so empowered with the Lord and not move into it? I mean, you watch people. I mean, I was in some places, and people come in. they all spiritual. they supposedly all spiritual. They sit there like a bunch of knots and bumps on the log. I praise God that he rests me in his glory that I can't hardly see spiritual violation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see the rest in the glory I can't even see spiritual violations. I'm just going to declare the word of the Lord. Man, I watched, I watched his, I'm going to tell you right now, I watched his a house full of people somewhere where it's on, on the scale of a thousand people as they begin to be shaped by the word of God as we preached. I'm telling you right now, it was a people ripe for the picking, ripe for the moment. I'm, they just, just as, as we ministered the word of the Lord, as they just begin to make a shift, just a radical change. And then it doesn't take 10 preachings. It doesn't, I mean, I ministered there like three, two times, I think, and then two times at another church that was connected with them. It doesn't take year after year after year after a while. You just got to say, man, I'm going to tell you right now, this ain't working out. You know why? This ain't working out. Because what's happened is the word of God has fallen upon deaf ears and has created hardened hearts. You're going to have to get yourself converted. You're going to have to get yourself a miracle of new conversion. Start over. Go ahead. And understand what God has said and just go ahead and fully buy in. Just start doing it. Just, just stand up and start doing it. Just, start, just stand up and just start going for it, huh? Hallelujah. And, 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 and you know what? If only the flakes give tongues and interpretation of tongues, then so be it. Because that's what you allowed. And we'll just stand here and listen to the flakes give tongues and interpretation of tongues. Because anybody who's not a flake supposedly wasn't willing to do it. So really, then you have to ask the question, who really is the flake? <laughs> the people that are doing it, that are just coming up with a bunch of nonsense, you know? God so it was so pleased today with Mars. Did you see it? It was amazing. Huh? Then you have to run her who really is the flake. You know, the person is least getting up being covetous about it, the people sitting there with their mouth shut. I'd say the people sitting there with their mouth shut because at least somebody's moving in what God has already empowered us to do. They're not just hearing about it. They're not just talking about it. They're doing it. I mean, God wants us to be zealous. It's great when people got you know, some knowledge with their zeal. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's God. 
It's about time some people start moving with God. You start moving with God, you're going to find out how wonderful heaven is. You'll bust through your fear. You'll bust through your doubt and your unbelief. You'll bust through your discouragement. You'll bust through the oppressive, demonic, harassing, evil spirits that have held you at bay. Huh? Because you don't know how to move in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. When you don't know how to move in the strength of the Lord and power of his might, you end up like a coward. I'd hate to get to heaven and find out that all everybody's looking at me kind of out of the corner of their eyes going, there's a coward. He made it to heaven by the skin of his teeth. He was saved as by fire. Are you listening to me? Uh, uh, there's, group, there's that group of people. They were just barely shut, saved. Okay, make room for them. Okay, let's try to love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> try to embrace. You know what I'm saying? We don't want that. Come on, people. Let's come on. Go ahead and be valiant. Go ahead and live giant for the Lord. I mean, hallelujah. Go ahead and take some risk. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name. Go ahead and experiment with God. Come on. Go ahead and put his word to a trap. Test. Go ahead and prove the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead and move on into miracles. Go ahead and just step out big. If you fail, you'll at least fail big. I'd rather fail big than sit around doing nothing, huh? Living and playing it safe. Because you're never going to enjoy this wonderful presence of the Lord. You're never going to know the beauty of fellowship. You're, you're never going to be fulfilled. You'll always remain empty inside until you start participating with the Lord. When you begin to participate with Him, that's where all the heaven, heavenly glory begins to overwhelm you. I'll tell you right now, you won't sit in here long. You won't remain at your job long because Father will have use of you. I mean, I tell you right now, when Father's got somebody moving with him and he has need of them, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care if you're a donkey, you're going to get untied and brought to him. <laughs> Amen. I don't care if you're a donkey. You can't, donkey can't decide for himself, but you're going to get untied and they're going to bring it to the master. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You making your bed that you're going to lay in, you're building your house that you're going to live in. Dear people, you're going to have to understand there is no day that it just doesn't count. There are no actions that are, you know, that are, you know, misdemeanors to God or that are really ir irrelevant to the story. Every day you're deciding how you're going to flow with God. You better watch out what compromises you're making, what decisions you're making, what choices you're making. Why don't you go ahead and decide and choose to live in a heavenly realm? Amen. Why don't you go ahead and decide and choose that you're already living and participating with that which you get to be a part of throughout, throughout all eternity. Why are people waiting to die to go to heaven? You've already died. You're already there. You have the opportunity. Why would you choose something else? Why be all compromised and conflicted with all this stuff as you pursue greatness for yourself? Why don't you pursue greatness in Him? He's already signed, sealed, and delivered greatness. Amen. I don't care if you're Methuselah. I don't care if you're 120 years old right now. There is an opportunity for greatness. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're five years old right now. If we could just capture your attention, I'm going to tell you right now, there is a place of greatness for you. Father wants to do these things in your life. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about connectivity. I want you to understand, until you begin to call that which God called the holy honorable, and those who are anointed of the Lord, you honor them, you reverence them. That's what God, people have lost this. They've lost the sense of the understanding things in the spirit and understanding them after the value of which the Lord has placed upon them. If you look in the Old Testament, there was a disposition that people had towards folks who had received the anointing. They were anointed by the Holy Ghost, and, I, and they, they had the anointing oil upon them. I'm telling you right now, there was a great reverence and there was a great respect for that. There is a great reverence and a great respect for that taught in the New Testament. Just think about the gift that came to perfect you, the gift that came to build you up. Think about the great reverence that would be there. But you look at Isaiah chapter 58, for example, in verses 13 and 14. The Lord said, when you call the holy honorable and you honor him. Are you listening to me? You see, honor is the first part of connectivity. You know, if you're going to, uh, in reality of it is, is there's various different displays of that honor. For example, the Lord tells us that we're supposed to esteem everyone better than ourselves. But the, you know what? I don't know that there's a lot of people who practice that because they go home and talk bad about everyone else and run them down and talk about what they did do or didn't do. Let me just tell you this. Anybody who talks bad to you about someone else, understand this. Why they're saying that to you, understand this, that they're talking bad about you to somebody else. Okay, so now's your time to get into the mix. 
huh? And say, you know, pr help get them delivered before they go running you down. I mean, behind your back, see, you got some motivation. I understand this is, this is the way it is, you know? And so, and then it's a whole nother level when they begin to take up a cause or an accusation against those that the Lord has anointed. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to talk about, you don't want to, you don't want to run down the, anybody, the priest uh, over there at the Episcopalian Church or the Roman Catholic Church, anybody that possibly has got the anointing, been born again of uh, the Spirit of God and has gotten the anointing upon them. You know, the dead-headed, dried-up, uh, you know, old Church of God person who barely can even talk, you know, and is so dry and whatever. You're just going to have to understand, you didn't touch the anointing, you're going to have to call the Holy of the Lord honorable and honor Him. Because you're not going to ever have a connectivity. You know, people just want to run around and just compare brains and knowledge and, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, take each other's weight and height and then decide who's better. This is a Western thing. You know, don't adjust your halo while you're trying to say that you don't do that. Just adjust your halo. It's a little crooked. Pull around because you do. Huh? Every one of us have to guard this. Every one of us. You know, I gave myself to the, to, to the Lord. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself to loving people the first three seconds that I meet them. And some, some people, you need this for more than, more than for others. Now, there's some people that you just immediately, almost instantaneously clash with. It's just a weird thing. I don't understand it. Okay, there's all kinds of theories about it. But it's entirely spiritual and all the theories are wrong. Okay, so bottom line of it is I know how to deal with it properly. Because if I give myself to, to, to loving them in the first three seconds, depending upon the love of God, the Holy Ghost, to flow out of me, let me tell you what happens, okay? Immediately you begin to understand and deal with how much you are affected by the spiritual powers of darkness. How much you are influenced by the spiritual realm that is influencing people everywhere, every day. The God of this world, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, the voice of the accuser, the voice of the deceiver, all those things that are part of strife and division, all those things that are part of criticism, all that mess. It becomes, begins to become a va a very, very clear to you. Because now you're having to more effectively deal with the forces that before you maybe not even conscious of because you just, it was normalized to you. You're anesthetized to it and you just go with it. And you think that somehow that you've actually believed that somehow that's some kind of spiritual discernment. Uh -oh. rut row is right. Uh-oh is right. It ain't a spiritual discernment. Huh? And we're going to have to understand if we'll quit doing our own pleasure and speaking our own words... Then the Lord said, but we would rather do his pleasure and speak his words. Then he said, I'll cause you to ride upon your high places in the earth. You think about that privilege of the anointing. People, God has made it so, so easy. I mean, he's even made it easier than that. He just said, look here, I'm just going to take a bunch of unfit, unworthy, alienated people. I'm going to reconcile them and anybody who calls. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon them. And they're going to all begin to prophesy just like the prophets. It's going to happen as quickly as it did with Saul. Huh? And that happened pretty quick, man. And, you know, Saul's no time, no time, in no time, Saul's making an altar so he can have something to eat. That's Paul, that was his first motivation. Did you know that was Saul's first altar? His motivation was for something to eat. And right after that, he made a monument unto himself. Oh, yeah, that's, you could just go read about it. <laughs> Saul, Lord Jesus. I mean, you know, he took a wrong turn in the road big time. He went from, you know, he went from being somewhat shy to all of a sudden he is empowered and he just lost his head altogether. Hey, eh? just completely went to seed, you know. There, you know, there, the relationship was seriously lacking. God gave him a new heart. God changed his heart. But he wasn't willing to walk in the word of God. He immediately started taking everybody's position. He wasn't willing to just take the place of his anointing and then go ahead and honor Samuel. He was immediately started dishonoring God and dishonoring the things of the anointing. And it took no long, but no, no time for he was sorted out and he has a demon now on him tormenting him. I mean, people, I'm just telling you right now, you got to obey spiritual laws of life. People just act, you know, they just act loosey-goosey with everything with God. You know, they just act like they can just make it up as they go, whatever it is that they believe, whatever it is that they decide, they agree or disagree. Give me a break. God's got spiritual laws. They are not subjective. They are as clear and as absolute as any, as above anything that exists in the world. It's the absolute truth. Everything else is just ideas that really have no tr lasting value to it. But the Lord said, if we'll walk in the spiritual laws of life, 
then we'd be walk free. We'd walk free from the law of sin and death. I really like this. I really like. I really like. I've decided. I've discovered that if I simply do what God tells me to do, I get to walk in a glorious, abundant life. It is a blessing. I mean, I'm telling you right now, the pleasures that Father gives me is far beyond any pleasures that you'll ever have in your lust of the flesh and your lust of the eye and your associating, carousing with demon spirits, defiling the temple and 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 and, and committing high treason against Almighty God. You listening to me now? Yes. Now you're just going to have to understand. You got God's given you enough ability to stand up against all the prince of power, uh, uh, all the prince of the air and the power of darkness. Give you enough authority, Amen. and but you're going to have to decide whether or not it's worthwhile to enjoy his, the pleasures that is in His presence and the joy that is at His right hand. You have to decide. You have to decide. There's way too many compromises going on. There's way too much mixture. There's way too many pretenders. There's way, way too many posers. huh? There's a lot of people standing out there on the beach, so to speak, with their surfboard, and it's all waxed up, and they got their shorts on, they got their muscles in their tan, and they never pedal out because they're, you know, come on, they don't even know what they're doing. Listen, it's, it's just posing because that's really the context of a poser, really. Huh? It's a guy who's all suits up. He's got all the equipment. He looks really good, you know. He looks like a professional golfer, man. Don't let him swing because as soon as he does, you're going to know it's all a pose. It's all a pose. He's hanging out at the clubhouse talking about, you know, a bunch of nonsense that he never did. Huh? He's got all the verbiage. He read all the books. He's got all the lingo. He looks, he looks the part, but he does, if he gets out there, he's not going to do nothing. Uh -huh. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna, he's gonna shoot a 200 on a par nine. I'm in a par three, nine holes. Okay, are you listening to me? I would, come on, people. I'm just been trying to draw you into something and trying to get you out of whatever it is you possibly might be into tonight. And understand that the way the transgress is hard, but the way of those people who obey God is easy. If you could just step right into this thing, you can have it all. You have to believe it God's way and quit editing His Bible. I mean, I, I just to meet people, I, you know, I want to take their Bible and I want to go ahead and I want to mark it up according to how they live it. I want to tear every page out that they're not doing and I want to blot out every sentence that they don't participate with. How many words would you have left? Huh? Jesus wept. You'd have that one. <laughs> There'd be a few others you'd have. Huh? But it's about time we have all the signs and wonders scriptures Amen. too. It's about time we have the manifestation of the Spirit that is given every... This is the description of the body of Christ. Why is it that we're going to be willing to let... Why is it that we're going to be willing to let the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ be less than all the fullness of Him that filleth all things? Why is it that we're going to be willing to be sick and profane His name? All right, I'll tell you right now, you listen to me. I'm on you. Huh? Huh? Sick, bloated... I'm going to go through the whole list of things, huh? And we got, all got all our reasons why we have whatever it is we got. Give me a break. Come on, let's just conform to his word. Amen. Let's press in for the miracle. Let's don't give up till we got all that Father has. Amen. Let's take a hold of what we got and don't let, don't let up. I mean, why should you, why should you go in and pray in the Holy Ghost? You know, and I was so blessed. I had a bunch of people, a bunch of young people doing the same thing Catherine's doing right now. I was so blessed. I'm going, my goodness gracious. I mean, this is my first sermon kind of thing, you know. I got people in the wards. It's, it's wonderful because it's wonderful when people begin to honor the anointing and recognize the word. And they do because they're hungry, man. They haven't just thwarted, thwarted the word over and over again, said, I can't do it, have a give up mentality. Uh, they failed and so they can't get back up. Get out the mud, get up, let's start moving. Come on, man. So quit, quit trying to have something different than what God described and then think that we're supposed to verify, validate that. I'm not validating something that's different, looks different than what God described. I'm going to say you're wrong. You, you, you ugly. You're not anointed. I doubt you're born again. So go ahead and get saved right now. Go ahead and get baptized. He poured out a spirit upon all flesh. And you got to, you're going to have to be refusing that not to have it. You've got to be rejecting it. You've got to be resisting God, the Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't do that, people. It's a, God's mercy endures forever. As long as you're alive, you're under his mercy. Somebody said, oh, I've probably gone too far already. You're still alive. <laughs> Once you run out beyond God's mercy, you're going to die. You wouldn't be around. You're still alive. There's mercy for you. Amen. Huh? But here's a hard task, a hard job, a hard, laborious, laborious worker that you've got ahead of you. And it ain't the devil. 
<laughs> it's you. Yeah. It's you. You had to get up, and you're going to have to just say, okay, wait a minute, you know what? I'm going to start moving in the things that God described. I'm going to have them. I'm going to he said, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and you prophesy. I'm going to start prophesying right now. Here we go. I'm going to let it go. Huh? Hallelujah. And then, and, and, you know, come on, man. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on now. Guess somebody's got to be zealous. Somebody's going to have. God purified himself of people zealous of good works. And the only definition I know of good works is the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, the life and ministry that has been given to the church that begins with the Spirit poured out upon you and you prophesy. Amen. It begins with you not getting all filled up every day with the junk that belongs to pursuing your own self-interest and will, and then you come to church and throw it up. All the stuff that's been stuffed in you all day long, right? Because the will can't, look, the will can't start flowing until whatever's clogging it up comes out first. And here we got all the problems, all the stress, all of the disgruntledness, all of the disappointment, all of the discouragement, all of the stuff that goes from eating all of that mess and filling your emotions and your passions up with things that are contrary to the ways of God. And there is no sign and wonder. There is no majesty. There is no light of the world. There's nothing for somebody to be captivated by. I don't understand it, but it is beautiful. That's called the love of God. Amen. That's walking in the beauty and the splendor of heaven, having now been raised up far above all other things because we're walking upon our high places in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sit in a place called above all principality, power, and might. Far above, far, 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 far above all the things that Satan is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't care if your boss is the devil incarnate. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You have more authority than he does. You know what? It doesn't matter if your professor is the Antichrist. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. You have more authority. I mean, my, you've overcome them. Wow. You've overcome them. You've overcome them. It's just amazing to me how, how God's people abdicate the reality that they can create an atmosphere of divine power and glory. They abdicate because as soon as somebody gives just a little bit of a cross look at you, you ready, man, you ready. What's up? What's your attitude? What's your problem? You just respond to it. You're taken over by it. They get just a little teeny bit of an expression of, 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 demo, of the demonic realm. And it takes you and it is a baptismal measure that comes upon you. In expression. My goodness. This ain't got to get turned around. How, uh, come on. This ain't got to get turned around. Where you far above all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, where you just walk in the place and man, because I'm gonna tell you right now, as soon as you as soon as the enemy is not able to overcome you with whatever he's doing, immediately you have the upper hand. You are in charge. As soon as you're overcome by that stuff, you are discharged. You a slave. You're not shining no more. You've gone from a shining star to a piece of mud. You know, there's an aggravation. It's and mud's an aggravation. Are you listening to me? I don't want to break that down too much for you. I'm talking to you. We're not playing games. I'm not talking about somebody who's watching on the web. I want to make sure that everybody's very clear. If you don't think I'm talking about you, you're wrong. If you think I'm talking about you right now, you're right. Ha! Ah, hallelujah. And you know, I need to understand how to call the holy of the Lord honorable. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And honor him. Because you'll never connect. You'll never connect with the head. If you do not connect, I don't really fully, I don't believe that apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher are the hand ministry. I really don't believe it. I believe it's the head ministry. I believe it's representative of the head. You're listening to me. Yeah. You know, I think it's really it's nice to think about it being the hand. It could be nice thinking about it being the toes. I mean, the foot. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's the head ministry. Yeah. It represents the mouth speaking to the church right now. Amen. The mind of Christ. The declaration of the heart of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ha Expressing the heart of the Father and the mind of the Spirit through the words that are being sp yeah. spoken. People, that's what's going to result in unity where everybody begins to come on an equal leveling field. Come on now. Come on now. 
I mean, you know, the Lord Jesus broke the thing down for them. He's talking about he's got to go die and suffer and be rejected of the Gentiles, and they're wondering who's the greatest among them. I mean, we're messed up. We're messed up from the word go. We're messed up. Think about it. He's trying to communicate to them, listen, I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be persecuted. They're going to put me to death. And they're going, who do you think is greatest? And then at that moment in time, uh, James and John come up with a brilliant idea. They get in an argument, you know, about, you know, some things. And they say, you know what? This is our time. This is our time. We could potentially buy for the right-hand and left-hand position and just basically do a, do a, you know, huh? Go around all these guys who are right now scrapping about who's best. We'll just go right to Jesus. We'll get the right and the left. And then we'll come back, neener, neener, neeners. <laughs> Talk about all you want, about how great you are. We on the right and left hand ministry, we already got it. While you guys were scrapping among yourself, we went and got our seats. <laughs> Jesus is like... <laughs> <laughs> so he already dealt with that. You're going to have to learn how to be the servant. If you're going to move with me, you're going to have to learn how to be the servant. You're gonna have to, oh, come on, I'm just going to show you how to do this. I'm just, Peter still doesn't get it. Peter still doesn't get it. He thinks he's in charge because what Jesus said to him. You know what, Right? He, think, he still thinks he's in charge. But, you know, it doesn't take long that it all gets sorted out. Father's talking to you. Where is it that you're going to learn how, all of a sudden, to come down off of your, your, your exalted human seat? Amen. You're going to come on with your exalted human seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come learn of the Lord Jesus. Let him, you know, Peter's already, he's, you know, he gets rebuked over and again by Jesus. You know, the big mouth gets rebuked over and again by the Lord Jesus. And still, the Lord's just trying to show him there at the very last day. He's still trying to show Peter. Takes towel and basin in hand. Huh? When's the last time you guys washed each other's feet, by the way? When's the last time that the one in here who thinks that they're better than anybody else or has a superior anointing someone else kind of thing? has been the servant to someone else. I mean, you've got to think about that because if you don't practice this, it's probably not going to be in your life. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Come on, people. Yeah. you got to understand that God, the Father demands you to make a connection with one another. Yeah. You're going to have to, Jesus says, I want you to learn to me, Peter. I want you to understand. No, you're not going to wash my feet. That means that you're not even, not even the lowest Jewish servant can do that. You've got to get a Gentile slave to do that. You know, it's the untouchables that do that. Kind of, it's a caste system, right? You can't do that. And he says, if, you, I can't, if I can't serve you this way, because really it's just you trying to hold on to your own status by not allowing me to do this. Because as soon as I do this and I'm greater than you, then you're lower than me. Can anyone say that again? I'm disrupting your status. As soon as I do this and you've already exalted me as greater than, than yourself, then you've got to be lower than the foot washing servant and you're just not willing to do that. And so that's what Jesus addressed. He said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part of me. Peter's like, okay, I'll start with the head. You know, <laughs> I want to have a part. It, it, to, learn, to learn something so important, to make connection. How do you make connection? Where is the connectivity? If you don't make, make connection, you're never going to receive the flow of the things of the Spirit. Why couldn't Jesus do mighty miracles or really any miracles in Nazareth? Because a prophet has no honor in his own hometown among his own native people. He has no honor. When there is no honor, there's going to be no flow. When there's no honor, there's going to be no connectivity. When there's no honor, there's, going to be, there's never going to be that reverence that is absolutely essential in order to be able to receive what is there vested in a person. And Jesus had vested in him every bit of the power and the authority of God, but it didn't matter who was sick and who was diseased and who, how needy they were and how much they loved God in Nazareth because they, did not, they, had, they were not able or willing to honor him. You're just going to have to understand that you don't have to try to figure this out because you have to figure anything out any more than you. Come on, you can't work yourself out of a wet paper bag on your own. Give me a break. You can't. And it's hard for people to understand this. See, you've never been to the crisis enough to where that you've come so desperate, crying out to God, Lord, I know that I can do nothing of myself. You've still got a lot of things that you can do. And that's why it's very difficult for you to flow in the place that demands you to say, I can do nothing of myself. Understand, Father's got this room for you. Okay, you're going to have to, you're not going to, you're not going to really ever get this until you begin to go beyond where you're living and start doing what Christ Jesus says to do. You've got to get yourself in trouble, okay? 
You're going to have to get yourself at the point of death. You're going to have to be willing to be put to death for Jesus Christ. That's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. You know, we're always being put to death that the life of Jesus may be more to manifest in our mortal body. Think about this. So I'm going to go risk my life. You know, I praise the Lord for every one of you, you know, who were able to give to help us go. And, and those of you who maybe you weren't able to give, maybe just didn't have the resources, but your heart's in it and your prayer's there. I mean, I tell you right now, you know, I covet prayers. I covet Holy Ghost prayers, you know, more than anything else. I love a praying church. I love a praying church. You know, I, I love to go to different places, and especially in third world countries, and I see it, people that give themselves to prayer. It is beautiful. Rather than people who've got to make sacrifices to come to prayer, and they're just sitting there going. <laughs> and that's really what it looks like to me. I'm <laughs> It honestly, it looks that way to me. It's very ugly. The, whole, the anointing of the Holy Ghost beautifies. It's beautiful. Humanity, ugly. Humanity, ugly. Ugly. Anointing, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. That's how I define ugly and, 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 and beautiful. Based upon the anointing. Not based upon some corruptible, you know, facial features. The anointing. The splendor of heaven that is available to anybody who wants it. Father's not stingy. He's not a respecter of persons that give to some and don't give to others. Hello. Who did this? Randy printed our itinerary. Yeah. That's our itinerary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tired just looking at it. <laughs> That's our itinerary. You can, it's got dates, but it doesn't have the times on it. It's got dates. You can see. That's our itinerary. Those are just our connecting flights. That's not how many meetings we're preaching. You're going to have to multiply that to get to meetings. Huh? I'm blessed. I'm honored to be able to do it. It's just that we're going to be worn out. <laughs> huh? Praise God. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. People, if you could just take it and begin to pray. No, don't give me no lay me down to sleep prayer. <laughs> don't give me God is good, God is great. Now we thank you for this food. Oh, don't give me that kind of prayer. I want prayer. I want prayer and intercession in the Holy Ghost. I want prayer that's heard in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah, give me that too. Oh God, I'm up. Pat's coming in. I won't be back in time for Pat. I'll be back on the 4th of, of June. Pat's coming in on the, uh, on the 3rd. He'll be here third, night of the 3rd. Tim Hall will be here this weekend. He's coming in on Saturday. And they're going to do, I haven't talked to him about it, but they're going to do Sunday. They're going to do Monday. And he's going to do Wednesday night as far as I understand. So I'm going to just give him the option. We might as well do Tuesday as well. And, you know, just go after, just go after uh, connecting with the anointing, serving the anointing. If there's something that you don't like or you think that's out of place, you know what? Then be high-minded. What do you know? What are you doing? Well, when have you, where have you done crusades where 100,000 people have been in it? What, what makes you so intelligent? What makes you an expert on God's Word? I mean, come on. You know what? You've got to watch this stuff, people. Are you listening to me? Because that stuff, it keeps, what it does is it keeps you from receiving the supply of the Spirit. You've got to be able to connect. You cannot connect unless you honor. You can't connect unless you honor. You cannot connect unless you reverence. You need to understand, Father has commanded that you and I be connected together as a body. That's what kind of unity He wants. And you've got to be willing to let, be transparent with God. And you've got to look at where you're high-minded. You've got to look at where you're independent. You've got to look at where you don't listen, where you do it your own way. God's not going to give you anointing. You'll just be another Saul. What you'll do is your first altar you'll build with some, so you can, you'll build an altar so you can eat because you're hungry. And the next thing you'll do is you'll build a monument to yourself. 
and before, and then and shortly after, you'll be demon possessed and die and go to hell. So we're just going to keep you like you are, sick, diseased, and overwhelmed. So you keep crying out to God. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Then, look, I'm telling you right now, the Lord corrects His children. Amen. And, and He's talking about disobedient children. Listen, He would turn around, for heaven's sakes, for Christ Jesus' sake, and for my sake. You're on the front row. Huh? Jesus. Jesus. We just have to have a deliverance meeting over here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on now. Put that up. We can't have food in the front row. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heaven. Come down and flood our souls right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you can't connect with each other as a body, you can't flow in the manifestation of the Spirit. See, you know, let me just tell you. Let me let me tell you. I was just I was just meeting with I was just meeting with two people in the ministry. Two people in the ministry, already in the ministry, doing great things in God. And they were talking to me about their business. You don't have to get a hold of that, man. I mean, she was five months old. That's one thing. She's five years old. You don't have to get a hold of that. That's getting out of control. And uh, she's got to obey. She has to obey you. She can't fight you. At any rate, they were talking to me. They said, Dad took me out to lunch. They were talking to me about the business and the finances. They were making what they needed to do in their business to make more and more money. And I said, I said, do you mind? You know, I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to be rude to you. But as far as I'm concerned, the anointing, the call of God upon your life is so much bigger. And the wealth of your our divine opportunity is so much bigger if you, than anything that you could possibly ever do that if you had all of the wealth in the world, it still could not compare to what God's purpose to do. I mean, I saw, I was looking at some big, big anointings. I said, all this stuff is, is just a distraction. I said, why don't you just forget about it all? That wasn't really what they were looking for. But why are people spending their anointing for that which cannot profit? Why? I mean, if you are going to spend your anointing, go ahead and get real wealthy. Go ahead and get real rich. Because, I mean, you might as well get something out of it. But it's still not going to be compared. It still can't compare. I just want to say this, people. You, you get, forget about all the other stuff. You get stuff right. You get your family right. Come on now. You get your spirit right. Huh? You go out there seeking God. Come on now. Huh? If you've got problems in your house, the Lord, you can say, I've got an impossible problem in my house. Well, then it will be remedied by fast and pr- fasting and praying. Amen. Fast and pray till the problem's fixed. Amen. Amen. I mean, they were, the di- disciples were up against it. They were up against it with a demon-possessed boy. They did not know how, how to move into that realm of authority to see that devil cast out. The Lord said this one goes out by fasting and prayer. Very simple. Very simple. So what, just get on with the program. You know, the program gets serious about it. You get serious about the things of God, you're going to have them. 
you get serious about functioning in the body of Christ. Get serious about functioning in the body of Christ. What do we have going on in the nursery? Is there a nursery going on? But if we do have a nursery going on, I definitely want some Holy Ghost ministry so that there can be a transition from those people who have no control over their kids. They can go up there and be taught of someone how to, how, to, how to get control over their children to be able to bring them back into the meeting. I want to I want to help. We want to serve you guys. We want to serve you guys. But I can't have a dozen kids from the front row all the way to the back row doing all this mess. It's just nuts. Come on, people, get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of your children. From the front row to the back row, get a hold of your children. You just get a hold of your children. Get a hold of your own lives. Get a hold of your families. Stop doing whatever it is you're doing and focus on the most needful things. Your, the souls of your children, the spirits of your children are far more important than anything else you're doing. I mean, because I'm going to tell you right now, I've watched misbehaving kids turn into folks who walk away from the kingdom of God by the age of seven, 16, 17 years old. So I'm not going to patty cake the drill. I'm going to demand of you to get it right. You better honor me and you better, you better respect me and you better reverence me because otherwise the provision and the ability to be able to get it right is never going to come to you. It's just want, 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 want. It's just words. You're never going to get healed. You're never going to move in the gifts of the Spirit. You're never going to have the product that Father has made available to you because you're unwilling to do it His way. You're unwilling to obey spi the spiritual laws of life that are in Christ Jesus. Thus, you're never going to live free from the laws of sin and death. You're going to be under the laws of sin and death. Thus, sin will come along and it's going to take you out. And you're going to see that, ha, I'm not delivered from the laws of sin and death. I'm under the law of sin because sin comes along and I just get caught away with the lust because I have no captivating passions in the kingdom or very little. Listen, uh, listen, there is mercy and there is grace, okay? But I'm going to tell you right now, it's mercy and grace for you and I to learn how to do it right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have to understand, there's some very important things to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have to recognize, number one, how sacred we are. Our lives are sacred. It's very sacred to Him. All God's stuff is sacred. It's sacred. And we're going to have to get, we're going to have to get with the program. He, he says, if you, <laughs> he says, you're my temple, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. You're my temple. It's sacred. If you violate my temple, if you do something against my temple, if you make my temple unclean, I'm destroy you in hell. Uh, once again, you better get it right. Listen to me. I'm telling you, people, it's understanding that the things of God are sacred. Okay? His ministers are sacred. I'm wherever his glory, wherever his anointing oil is, is sacred. Wherever, wherever there's an encounter, a meeting place with God, wherever there is an altar, it's sacred. Be careful what you're doing with it. Be careful how you approach to it. And if you would just simply be willing to do these things, everything else just comes so easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to open your Bibles real quickly with me to a couple of verses of Scripture. And I'm going to begin with you in Ephesians chapter, in Ephesians chapter 4, and I know it's already gotten late on me. I want you to press in. Tonight, if you're a parent, why don't you press in for a greater authority and a greater anointing? Somebody says, how do you do it? You take your child up in your arms, and you pray in the Holy Ghost. You don't pray in the frustration of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You pray in the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost, okay? That changes the atmosphere, that brings joy, that brings peace, that overwhelms, okay? You just got to practice it. There's a handful. But I mean, these flags, you, you know, just <laughs> slapping the dad and basically crawling over top of the back in the back row. I mean, you know what? From the front row to the back row. Look, you don't want that. I'm telling you right now, you can bring that under control by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You've got to learn how to create an atmosphere. I watch parents all the time. I watch kids create an atmosphere for the parent. It is working completely reverse. They completely have control over the parent. So they start getting all upset. The child starts thrashing about. And the parent's overwhelmed with all kinds of confusion, stressed out, bewildered, beside themselves, don't know what to do. You just were taken over. 
by the, by, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. By the situation and circumstance. If you just take them up in your arms, you begin to go after, not, not, not screaming at them, not hollering at them, not, you know, frustrated in the Holy Ghost, but praying in the Holy Ghost, the atmosphere will change. And before long, their little spirits will change. And you get that right. And then you've got to get some laws. You've got to get some laws, parents, going to where that you don't, you're not inconsistent with what you say to do. If your kid is five years old and still slapping you, you got yourself a serious problem. You hear me? If they're not obeying you, if they're not trembling at your word, you better get them trembling at your word. You better get yourself some wisdom. People, I'm, there's nothing more important than us raising our children to walk in the kingdom. There's nothing that is more of a defamation of your character and of your life than your kids be completely out of control. So make sure that you understand what's going on. Make sure you watch out. When your kids have an affinity for people who are demon-possessed, be careful. And they are really comfortable with someone who's got a package of devils in them and they're just clinging to them. That's a serious problem. That's a problem. You want your children to be very uncomfortable with someone who doesn't know the Lord and has demon activity in their life. And very comfortable with someone who has the anointing in their life. If you don't have that, you know, imagine that you're going to now try to educate your child saying, listen, you have an affinity, this is a four-year-old, okay? You have an affinity for people who are demon-possessed. This is not good. You're going to have to correct that behavior. You're going to now have to have an affinity uh, and an attraction and be comfortable with people who are uh, full of the Holy Ghost. Are you going to be able to educate your child with that? Absolutely not, okay? You don't even understand what you're saying, much less are they understanding. That is a spiritual thing that you, base, that you come to know and understand being in the presence of the Lord. Hello! Not something you can teach any more than I can really teach you tonight how to walk in loneliness and meekness. Any more than I can really teach you tonight how to walk in love. You have to come. It's a spiritual dimension of life. It is an encounter of relationship with the Lord that you crave, that you desire, that you yield to, that you embrace, that you just simply receive. And it is absolutely essential for the glorious church to be functioning. I mean, come on, man. Where is the church functioning in where it's supposed to be, where the manifestation of spirit that is given to every man is able to function in the meeting? Because I'm telling you right now, it primarily only works in small group settings when you've got a number of different matured people who flow and operate in the gifts of the spirit on a regular basis. They come together, and suddenly you have that atmosphere and that anointing, and that is, not, that is really not the church. The church is this whole mixture of people who've been saved for one day all the way to people who've been saved for, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, however long. Functioning and flowing and operating in the Holy Ghost. We're making church something that it is not. There is no chapter in the Bible to describe how most churches function. You would tell me that, you know, we have a book of Acts Church and I'm going, you know, come give me a break. I don't say that. We really don't. They, it's just, it's just a, maybe a little blip above everybody else, maybe. And that's what causes them to think that. And praise God for the love that is here, and praise God for the anointing that is here, but it still doesn't look like 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It still doesn't look like Acts chapter 2. I mean, I go on and come on. You know, when you think about this, just before I read this, think about Cornelius' house. What made them so, so easily able to receive the realms of the power of God when they were not, they were just foreigners, they were just heathens. They, they, they had some sort of an understanding about relating to God based upon the law, but they still understood themselves as being, as, as misfits. They still understood themselves as not being acceptable because they were Gentiles. They still had to stay in the Gentile, according to the Gentiles. They could still never, I mean, you talk about a ministry of condemnation. Are you listening to that? Yeah. yeah. Amen. But here, there's this great honor. Why is there a great honor? Because they know they got the right guy talking. Because the angel said, send for Peter. Now they got the right guy. They're all sitting there all bug-eyed. The guy's here. This is the guy. This is the guy that the angel of the Lord said. He said, and, and the angel of the Lord said, just, that you're going to give us the words of life. So here we are. Go for it. So he's speaking. He doesn't have to speak long because of the honor 
the honor created a connectivity, that reverence created the connectivity, that hunger, that thirsting, that w was re resulted in them being totally prepared to the Lord to receive. There was a loneliness, a meekness. There was none of this competition. There was none of this comparison. There was none of this other stuff going down within the dynamics of that house. And the power of God came upon them in no time. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Come on, people. Come on, people. It shouldn't take long ministering the word and ministering the things of the spirit by song and by worship. Listen, I'm not interested in no singing. I'm not interested in a bunch of singing. We were in a meeting. We were just in a meeting. That God, they had everything. My goodness gracious. They had everything. Their, pl their platform was as big as this room. I'm not kidding. They had everything up there, man. They had it all. They had a brass section. They had everything. And they were the best. They were skilled, talented, anointed musicians. I mean, but what is that? What is that? Oh, I'm not impressed with that. Because I'm so hungry for the things of the Spirit. I'm so hungry for the things of anointing. I know how Father therefore feels about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand there and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be rejecting. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna participate with every way I can. But I want I want the things of heaven. Father wants to produce the things of heaven in our life. Listen, there was no music team on on, on the day of Pentecost. Did you notice that? They, didn't, they weren't, they weren't happen, just having to be singing hallelujah. Man, I'm getting ready to go to India. My goodness, that is obnoxious. I'm asking God, oh Lord, please help me to help these guys understand that there's a heavenly sound. We don't have to go. And it's about as bad in China. Give me a break. I'm not even asking for people to be westernized, but my goodness, their young people aren't listening to that. That's just like, this is old country, hick, Hindi music. <laughs> How am I supposed to relate to this? I know what I got to do. I just got to pray in the spirit. Smile and pray in the Holy Ghost. Because, I mean, we're not touching heaven. But it's the same thing. I'm making a point. I'm not just picking on the Hindis for their weird music. It's, it's, it's because I'm telling you right now, westernize all of the bands and all the stuff. It's still just, it really isn't, it isn't doing it. It isn't doing it. When are God's people going to go ahead and let the power of God take them to where there's a deep passion, there's a longing, there's something that is emotional about this. There's got to be, there's some, there's, you got to get a breakthrough to where it's an emotion. Where, God, where the presence of God's bringing you to tears, where the presence of God's bringing you to brokenness, where the presence of God's bringing you to neediness, where the presence of God is moving your deepest desire. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. I, be, I believe that that is what the Holy Ghost has been given to touch every human being on the planet for. Out of our belly, out of our colia. I don't want to set you free from that thing. Out of our colia, out of our emotions, and out of our passion. Out of our emotions, and out of our passions. Should begin to display the glory of heaven. The power of God. You know what provokes me? See people sit almost expressionless in the meeting, and then see them in the parking lot just laughing their head off, just getting all loud and talking to one another. I'm going to tell you right now, I guarantee you, Father, who is a jealous God, views that as idolatry. He, he, he views that as, as harlotry. I guarantee you that the world and your own personal interests are going to move your emotions to laughter and shouting and getting excited, and you sit in church like Spock, like you have no emotions and you not have any expression. That's demonic power. It's demonic power. I mean, I remember one time this year, I was in a situation and people, you know, they weren't really being moved by the spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer was powerful. It was powerful in the room. And there's very few people, if any, really even moving in the spirit of prayer. People had, you know, just a little, you know, courtesy, a courtesy voice. 
like a courtesy fall. This is a courtesy voice. It wasn't a prayer of the Spirit. It was a courtesy prayer. Huh? And then the meeting was over, and the place turned into a roar. People talking to one another. I was so grieved, so vexed. They put out the fire of the Holy Ghost through worthless activities. Through worthless deeds. They had quenched the Holy Ghost. They put out the fire of the Holy Ghost. Through worthless deeds. I want you to get close enough to the Holy Spirit that you know when he's grieved. I want you to get close enough to the Holy Spirit that you know how to move with him. You know his holy emotions. You begin to move in holy emotions. Hallelujah. You begin to a place of joy and rejoicing and celebration. Hallelujah. So easy. So easy. So easy. You know, I'm going to just tell you this. Listen to me. I want to tell you this because it's so, so important. You know, when you're praying for thousands of people, things really stand out. You know, and I've just been praying for thousands of people. You know, I've watched so many people come by. They want prayer for this thing, but that thing, the other thing. And you can just be praying for people, praying for people. And yeah, there's things happening. You're just praying for people. But all of a sudden, someone comes up and they're broken and they whisper in the ear, your ear, I've been under the power of an addiction that has healed me. And they begin to get broken. And all of a sudden, you can feel the anointing of heaven. Sit down on that thing. Sit down on you. Sit down on them. And the lightnings of God strike them. They get totally delivered. Why? Because there's a genuine realness. Everybody's passing by. The crowd's rushing around. But one person's touching the hem of his garment. One per per person's real and broken before God and wants deliverance and wants free of the thing. Satan has done a very good job of taking prisoner. A huge, maybe even a vast majority of men with the, with the demon power of pornea, sexual immorality. There's very few valiant men, very few mighty men who know how to stand against it, who've drawn the bloodline and will not cross over the bloodline. Huh? Satan's got, to, Satan's got to stare at me on the other side of the bloodline. And he may be doing all of his threatenings, threatenings huh? But he ain't getting near me. I'm on the other side of the bloodline. Huh? I have to see it. I have to deal with it. It has to pass by me as much as anybody else. I just say, no, you're not coming near me. I'm not, you're not touching me. This me, people. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 7 that they that go down, enter into the door, go down into the gates of hell and never return. I'm not even running. No, I'm not having that. I'm not doing that. I'm not running risk for that. Huh? People just want to live under this concept of constantly repenting. Give me a break. Repent. Yeah. Get yourself drawn the bloodline, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, be valiant in God. God wants to be, be valiant. Because... You know, these are some of the things also that we have to deal with because how is there going to be, you know, the, the thing is going to swell up and blow up because that's leaven. You know what I'm saying? You throw leaven in the cake, it's just going to blow up. So it's going to swell up, right? In the oven. It's going to bust, blow apart. You're not going to have the body of Christ functioning properly. Some big old gigantic problem with the thing. I'm just, I'm just, just get in the blood of Jesus. Get washed in the blood of Jesus. Get yourself on the right side of the bloodline. And understand, you can say no. Yes. Yes. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. I'm not having that. Yes. Why? Because I really want to come to know the pleasures that are in his presence. And so long as you're compromised by the pleasures of this world, you're never really going to know it. You'll hear his grace and his mercy. You'll feel his grace and his mercy calling you, but you'll never know the pleasures. You'll never know the thrill of heaven. You'll never know the intimacy with God. You'll never know it. You have to come to a place that you say, no more. I don't want those pleasures. They're not touching my, my emotions. They're not touching my passions. I don't want them. I don't care how hard they're coming at me. And then when you refuse that, it's now to begin to accept what God has freely given. Because he's given us the ability to make a choice. But we're going to make the choice because he's not conflicted. And he's not going to have a mixture. You listen to me. I don't care if you're standing on, I don't care if you stand on the platform and you levitate while you preach. Until you understand how to overcome sin, you'll never know divine pleasures. And there is no sorting it out because there are people who can do signs and wonders and miracles in his name who he does not know. 
and that do not know him and do not know his pleasures and they deceive. So he's the master of his craft. So don't you sit there and tell me whatever it is you're going on in your head. You break, get broken before God. Amen. You get broken because that's just the whole problem. People sitting there always running in fear and say, oh, I don't agree with it. I don't understand it. You know what? You don't understand much of anything. None of us do. Why, where, is it, where did it ever make a difference whether or not you understood it? Are you with me? Yes. If we, you tell me. Come on, where did it ever make a difference? All you had to do was accept that the Amen. Holy Ghost was going to come yeah. upon you yeah. and make you a new man. Amen. All you, had, you didn't have to understand it. Right. Well, I understand how he does it. <laughs> well, you do. No, you didn't have to understand it. You just accepted it. If you've got to understand how God's going to raise the dead, and you've got to go through all the, you know, the physiology of it and the biochemistry of it, <laughs> and then they begin to work out. Jesus, help us. The Word of God abides in you. The Word of God dwells in you. It defeats Satan at every point. Come on, people. Come on now. Come on. Come on. We're looking for a church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're looking for a church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, that's, I mean, I, I know, I know that that's why Jesus stands in the midst of his church and says, get in or get out. Because we've got to have a church. He loves the church. He so much he gave himself for it. He purified the church with his own blood. I mean, come on. He purchased the church with his own blood. He's made me an overseer in his, overseer in his church. I'm going to do my job. But to help in the grace of God, I'm going to do my job. And you need, to let me be, you need to let me do my job by understanding how to properly connect. You're going to have to understand how to walk in love and let God teach you how to walk in lowliness and meekness. You're going to have to understand yeah. that that's all going to start by, be started because you're going to be converted and become like a little child. You're going to be taught. You're not going to be some person who's going to come over here and school us. Well, I don't need to be schooled. I want to be schooled by the Holy Ghost. I don't want to be schooled by men. I'm interested in what the, I'm, I'm, I'm very hungry to be schooled by the Holy Ghost. I'm very hungry to learn the Holy Ghost, but I'm in, absolutely not interested at all in any human opinion, including my own. Honestly, including my own. I recognize I could do nothing of myself. Without him, I could do nothing. But if when I learn to rely upon him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. Everybody can do all things except for overcome sin. Everybody can do all things except for right, walk right with God every day. Everybody can do all things except for flowing in the Holy Ghost and prophesying. Everybody can do all things except for tongues and interpretation in tongues. Everybody can do all things except for the proper connectivity. Everybody can do all things except for walking in loneliness and meekness. Everybody can, come on. Well, what all things can you do if you could do all things? <laughs> and it was one of my curious questions for everybody who says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, that's wonderful. That is true. How many of them are you doing of the all? Praise God. Are you listening to me? Am I making any kind of sense? Yes. Yeah, I'm praising the Lord for that. I mean, I've got, uh, you know, I don't know if Ann and I are going to return. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident of it because I don't feel that I'm redundant. Uh, God's got human resources, but they in very short supply. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Right now, I figure I need to at least, at least live for 200 years. Yes. I mean, I would like to be redundant. I would like to, for a whole bunch of people to rise up, start flowing in the signs and wonders and miracles and have the fire of God on them so much that they're willing to do that itinerary. So Amen. where's the thing at? Right <laughs> Try it sometime. Here we go. Flight number one. This one here. 21 hours. Then we get rid immediately get on this one here. Another eight hours. So that's what, yeah, 29. And there's, there's three hour, four hour layovers in between. So I think I added up somewhere around 52 hours. First leg. Okay. To go preach four meetings. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to be anointed meetings. <laughs> 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 I promise you, you this <laughs> <laughs> By the time I get to, how do you say it, Vijawada? 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 By the time I get Vijawada, 
amount of hours I'm going to have spent. Those are going to be powerful meetings in visual order. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to stir you up by putting, you know, when I, when I realized how important this was to Peter, you know, when I, when, in understanding the message that he's talking about, because it's really about you and I giving ourselves to ultimately being, every, being what God's called us to be, to step into that realm where we have an entrance in to be able to function out of the realms of heaven to display the glory of God and on every scale because that's really what 2 Peter chapter 1 is all about. And he's saying, so long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'm, I'm going to stir you up by putting you in remembrance of these things. If it was that important to Peter, if he put it that high, I'm going to take up the torch. Amen. I'm not going to let his torch fall. Oh, Peter's dead, so we don't need that anymore. I want to listen. The Word of God abides forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm certain that now, after this meeting, every one of you is going to be connected as the body of Christ, Amen. functioning functioning as, it one, as one man, flowing in all of the gifts of the Spirit in the place. Just flowing in them. Being zealous. Being, being zealous. Being zealous. Being full of zeal, you run out. Being full of zeal, you run out. Being full of zeal, being full of zeal right in the meeting, you stand. Listen to me. You think about it. Being full of zeal right in the middle of the meeting, you stand up on your feet and you begin to shout out under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost a message of tongues. And being full of zeal, you ain't hardly even waiting. You're not waiting till it's done. You're gonna shout. You're gonna jump up out of your seat and start shouting out the interpretation. But you know what? You're gonna have to begin to get rid of some other passion so these passions can fill you. You're gonna have to get rid of some other interests so these interests to fill you. You have to get rid of some other emotions so these emotions to fill you. You got to get rid of other interests so these interests to fill you. You got to get rid of all these other things that have made idols and gods in your life. You don't know how many people I've prayed for. And as I begin to pray for them, I see like the, the image of the Roman legion. I see so many different idolatrous signs over them when I'm praying for them. I don't usually tell anybody. I just bring the thing down. And then it gets erected back up there after I've done crushed its head. Come on, people. But you've got to understand what Father's seeing. You get right. You get your heart right with God because you're going to stand before him very near future. You're going to stand before him. And he's not going to be interested in how much money you made. He's not going to be interested in how much school you got and what grades you made. He's not going to be interested in how well you speak. It's all going to be about how you live this life. Amen. This life of God. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Now. Come on now. Some of you are going to be embarrassed when you see what God's raising up and they go running past you with signs and wonders and make you look like you're dead. And I don't want that for anybody. And then you've got to be ashamed because you had the opportunity to run even bigger and you opted out to play some little stinking devil's game. To play some little, play with some little death toy out of the lust of the flesh. No. No. Nuts. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah. Talk about weird with a capital W. <laughs> God's anointed you with a divine ability to do Amen. wonderful things. Amen. And you chose to do what? God gave you the place to sit with the mighty in his kingdom. And you wanted to run with who? Come on, people. Let's get some zeal. Come on. Amen. Let's get some zeal. Let's get yes. real. Amen. If you don't think there's demon, a demon stronghold that creates a culture that is unique in Southern California, you haven't been out much. You don't have much comparison because this place is messed up. It is weird. It's in prison. And it's about time somebody gets bowing and enough in God to set the thing free. But as long as you're assimilated by it and act like it, you are a slave to it. You're bowing while we're standing up and saying we will not bow. You're bowing you down on your face, graveling before that idol, hoping you don't get called out because you hold on to your life. I mean, but I want you to come on. I want to stir you up. Amen. I want to provoke you. Amen. God's called us to be different. We stand against the course of this world. Amen. We've been given authority over all the powers of darkness. Now, come on now. Yes. Yes. 
you begin to you begin to be moved by the Lord to cast out devils and to deal Amen. with those things that that you're supposed to be dealing with, and you're not going to be sitting around, you know, serenading your little problem. <laughs> I'm a little problem. <laughs> Help us, Lord Jesus. And praise God, He is. Thank you, mighty God. Borashana Mayata. Borashana Mayataha. I kind of like the whole idea of preaching from my phone. Show you what an iPhone's for. My iPhone is sanctified. My, my, my iPhone, my iPhone belongs to the kingdom of God. It's, a, it's an instrument of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If it's not, you need to cut it off. <clears throat> if you were serious with God, you'd cut your hand off. Amen. Somebody said to me today, oh, that's a hyperbole. It's an exaggeration. I said an exaggeration brings to mind someone who's a liar. Yeah. I said God's serious about things he says. And I guarantee yeah. you if somebody gets serious about cutting their hand off, they're going to find the will and the divine ability to do something different. Amen. Amen. If you won't cut your cell phone off, there ain't no way you'd cut your hand off. Yeah. Yep. Huh? True. I'll tell you right now, if you're addicted to television, go ahead and give it away. Yeah. Yeah. Give it away. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever it is, some people need to cut some stuff off. You need to cut it off. You need to cut it off. Cut it off from you. Bring down that high thing. Huh? And be, get, get, yourself, get yourself a spirit of the Lord, a passion, a zeal for the Lord. Are you looking with me in Ephesians 4, 16 real quick? Yes. The Lord talks about the whole body being fitly joined together, properly joined together, perfectly joined together. It's like when in old times where they had to bring, where they had to put stones together. It had to be perfect. It had to be a perfect fit. It was seamless. Or when you begin to groove pieces of wood at, wood at corner, and it's a tongue and groove, or it, it's, a, it's a hole and, and dowel. It's perfectly fitted together. I mean, it is absolutely, it is a perfect 90 degree angle. It is, it is seamless the way it's connected together. A thing that looks like it's a piece of wood that it actually grew like that. Are you listening to me? I mean, Father wants us to be so perfectly to get connected together. It's like if you took us and you tried to personify us, we were a perfectly organized human being functioning as a body under with a complete submission and direction but what Christ Jesus the head was doing. Think about that, people. Yeah. Father wants to take you and I and miraculously take us into a realm of baptizing us, in, uh, 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 immersing us down in the Holy Ghost. We're all baptized into one body by the Holy Ghost. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, if you, that's something you've got to yield your members to. And if you, listen to me, if you're not doing it, you're not obeying God on the most fundamental level. You're not submitted to the will of Jesus Christ and the will of the Father on the most fundamental level. And all the rest of the stuff matters not. Nothing. It counts for nothing. Because it's all central to the church. And the church manifested all how you function as a part of the body of Christ is the evidence of the fruit and the proof that you've been born again and that you're submitted in, to Christ Jesus in obedience to the Holy Ghost. You got to get with this. Yeah. You have to get with this. Don't be, yeah. don't you be hearers anymore. Yeah. Once again, that would be what I'm telling you right now. Yeah. So just, it, it, the whole equipment in here just got to go. It just, it has to go. It has to go, and you just you have to take it out of the room, and it's got to go buy new equipment and do what's right because the thing is outdated. And it's not working right. It doesn't function right up there. So you guys pray it through. Pray through. I'm sitting there all silent. What are you sitting there all silent for? Why? Because you're being brought to mind of what you can do? I thought you were being brought to mind about the faith that could work through you. Honey, you're going to have to get this thing turned around. Quit looking to yourself all the time. Man, it is a habit. It's a terrible habit. It's a nasty habit. I say it's on the level of a filthy habit. Always looking to yourself. You know, instead of understanding, oh, yeah, we'll take a hold of that in faith right now and get her done. And my itinerary. <laughs> We'll take it by faith and get it done. Come on. Amen. Just... Amen. 
sit there and look at me. We're expecting too much of you. <laughs> Listen, we're expecting you to walk like Jesus. Amen. We're talking, expecting you to walk in a supernatural realm yes. under divine authority, a miraculous realm of God that you cannot do of yourself. Amen. What I'm telling you right now, I understand that it's just as difficult as trying to communicate to a four-year-old that they shouldn't have an affinity to where somebody who's demon-possessed. But now they've got to only have an affinity and really like and be comfortable around those who are full of the Holy Ghost. I understand that there is absolutely no way to educate you into this, but I can declare to you where God is calling you to come. And if you're willing to respond and go to where God is calling you to come, He will give you the ability, the insight, the wisdom, and the understanding to be able to walk this life. And because you're going to trust in Him, you're going to say, wait a minute, I can't do this on myself. Uh, myself, I can do. Nothing. So how many things can you do? Oh, but yeah, through Christ who strengthens you, and you're going to have to learn how to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to learn how to get around. Get, I have found the spot where the glory comes out. Guess what? You're running around out there. You're looking for water. You're trying to find how to get into this. And somebody's sitting over there going, <laughs> getting full, just drinking and getting bathed and just washing in it, just soaking in it. And you're just still wandering around. Hey, why don't you look? We're standing over here in the spout where the glory comes out. Why are you wandering around looking? Now, if you were really that, you know, if you were conscious of being that clueless, you would seek after help and healing. You know, you're wandering around looking for the water, and somebody's sitting there bathing in it. Oh, I just, if I could just find the spot, if I could just find some water, we're in the desert. <laughs> what do you reckon you're going to do in the natural? You're going to say, hey, there's water. You come running to get under the glory. Yes. He's getting under the glory. He's in the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> but unfortunately, because of the things, the spiritual things that run ruin that work against us, People are satisfied to do it their own way. Even though they're not getting the right results. Because of being independent. Not connected. Disconnected. Yeah. Huh? Be a terrible thing to watch tonight if I'm walking this way and one leg takes off, goes the other way. Huh? 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 One of my eyeballs pop out and run to the other side of the room. Because it's got something it wants to do over there. It's spotted something it wants to look at a little closer. And I'm not willing to go with it right now. So it's like, oh, I'm on my own. I'm going to go up and check this out. <laughs> but when we're properly fitted together, something's going to happen. What happens every, when we properly fitted together? When we're probably good fitted together, then the body of Christ begins to fully be manifested. That's what is being said by this verse of scripture. When we, when we listen to me, understand, when, we, when we're willing to just simply move with the Holy Ghost, when we're willing to understand the value of the church and place our participation in the church as the highest priority of our life, not our money-making skills, not all the ideas that we have, not our vacation that we're kind of running short on, not all the other interests, but how you function in the body of Christ. Suddenly that becomes more important to you than anything on the planet. Father's going to go, whoa, I got myself a person. And before long, he might even be able to say, I got myself a people. There was a time where the Lord said, I got a person. Job, I got a person. Enoch, I got a person. Noah, I got a person. What happens when God got a people? He can just say, whoa, I got a church. I got a church that's obeying. Not sitting around in doubt and unbelief, wondering when, how long it's going to be before I never step in to all these things. Wonder why God's sleeping. Oh, somebody wake him up. Because that's about the attitude. God's already done it. He's already poured it out. It's already an act of reality. Father's waiting for somebody who's going to say, I want this more than anything else. God tries the reins and he tries the heart. And as soon as he sees somebody who's serious and real, yeah. 
And he looks right in the midst of all your decisions when nobody's looking. And I pray it find within us a true and an honest heart and a sincere heart. Whereas, because I'm going to tell you right now, these things are free, but they're sacred and they're more important to God than anything else. And he watches over them with a jealous eye and they're going to become more important to us than anything else. People want the spotlight, but they don't want the lowliness and brokenness that is essential before there can ever really be the light of Christ Jesus being manifested. Come on now. Let's not build an altar for the gratification of our own selfish needs, which then results in us having a, building monuments unto ourselves. Come on, people. Let's build an altar of, of, of need for him of interacting with him. <sighs> You're going to have to make the right connection. That's going to begin with you, not me. That begins with you. That begins with you, not me. You. And how you interact with people around you and how you keep relationship and how you keep covenant. That the body of Christ, that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ may be able to fully function with a full revelation of all that has been given to us. So that it can increase. God wants to increase. People, God wants to increase. Yeah. He don't just sit around a little protective, a little selfish, a little clickish kind of thing. God wants to increase. Because, he, this, because the church in this proper connection begins to be, begins to be built up. Amen. Begins to be built up by this operation of divine love. If you're not willing to give yourself to divine love individually, Ann and I were walking down the doing, you know, doing our exercise today. Just talking about this period of time when we were walking during our exercise and just talking about how blessed it is to live in this love. How, how shocking it is to live in this, for people to live in this love, to see this wonderful love of the Lord and this joy and this pleasant attitude constantly there in our lives. There are so many, it, 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 it's almost like a rarity. <laughs> it's, it's such a rarity. People are all interested in all this other stuff. And if you talk, it, it's just so many people in the church have such a, a depressed, melancholy, bummed out, looks like somebody died, should be in great clothes, look. <laughs> Unless they're talking about going in the new Star Wars movie. <laughs> or worse, something of their own interest, personal interest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just got a new bestseller book from the latest one in the, in the tr you know, the trilogy or whatever. <laughs> Earthly interests are nuts running interference yeah. stinking running interference yeah, yeah. Well, just real quickly look at another verse of scripture with me and I, then when I come back in 30 days I know you guys are all going to be doing this Amen. I'm going to walk in Amen. walk in church and it's just going to be happening it's just going to be happening Amen. you can't the Lord will not allow you to be something in here that you're not out there. Yeah. He won't allow it. Yeah. He's not going to play pretend. God will not play pretend. Holy Ghost will only be where there is truth. You have to be this in your home to be able to be it here. And this is where the real true floodlight is going to say. Somebody said, oh, I pray really well at home, but it doesn't work here. It wasn't real at home. Yeah. If it was real at home, it would work here. You see, it won't work here because God won't allow them to lie. Yeah. He won't allow false pretense. Huh? The floodlight's here. What you really are all of a sudden begins to be revealed here in the church, in the midst of the church. And what you are out there that you think you're something, get rid of that. Stop that because it's holding things up. Amen. And start receiving what the reality of the move of God right here and then take it home with you because it's here. Because it's here. Because the glory of God, the power of God, divine ability is here. And you walk out of here without it, it just proves that you're not connected. Yeah. It just proves that you're independent, 
Independent thinker. Free spirit. Woo! <laughs> Doing it your way. Uh, it, high on it, too. Badge of honor. <laughs> but, dis, but, a, but a reproach unto God and yeah. despised by him. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. In the story, that's what God has to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. Change quickly. Amen. Christ Jesus is coming. Yeah. You better get ready. Yeah. He's coming. You're about ready to stand before the Lord. Yeah. You better get ready. Amen. I'm warning you. Amen. I'm warning you, people. Yeah. So let's look at quickly at Colossians 2.19. Yeah, there we go. Independent-minded. She figures church is a place to crawl around, roll around, and do whatever. Huh? Perfect model here tonight. Perfect example of what not to be doing. Are you doing it spiritually in your own life? Jesus. Help us, Lord. Yes. Grab a hold of him, pray in the Holy Ghost. Get radical, pray in the Holy Ghost. Just change the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Do it. So look at Colossians 2.19. Open your Bibles to Colossians 2.19 right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. There's no Bible study. This is not a Bible study. This is telling you what to do. You get with it now. This is a command you study. Amen. This is a study to find out whether you be obedient or not. This is a study to find out whether you be children of the living God. Servants of the Lord Jesus Christ are no. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Colossians 2.19. Let's look at it in the positive sense. Because it's laid out in the negative sense. Let's look at it in a positive sense. When we hold the head who is Christ Jesus. By which every part of the body functions. If we hold the head who is Christ Jesus in his proper place of authority in his proper place of honor, in his proper place of lordship, in his proper place of rulership, in his proper place that is supposed to be, he's supposed to have in the glory that he himself possesses, then what's going to happen? What's going to happen then is that the whole body will be nourished, be knit together. In other words, it's going to be strong. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be knit together. Look at that, knit together. Yeah. It is going to be connected as though the fiber of our being is inseparable. Yeah. It's not just, it's just not seamlessly put together as though that those joining pieces of wood were, grew together or those stones look like they actually we're there from the beginning of time. Would you just, come on now. Pull yourself together. It is going to be knitted together like the fabric of our being. Like the fabric of our being. This is what, he's the Lord said, you do this and I'll do that. If you'll obey me here, I'll, this is going to be the result. If you're not holding the head, you're not connected. So all that's going to happen is any church who's not so connected together, who's not so fitted together, who's not so knitted together, it's just proof that they're not following Jesus. Yeah. I don't care what signs they have. I don't care how much all of them love God so much. Praying all the time. And all the other religious nonsense that people say, you know, because it's just nonsense. If that's true, we wouldn't even have to ask you. There'd be the fruit and the evidence of it. Are you listening to me? Yes. And I guarantee you that the look that I gave to Naomi, the Lord Jesus given that look to his church. Yeah. And that's what he's pictured doing in Revelation chapter 1. Look at him, verse 17. Look at him. He's looking intensely. Scripture says that his eyes behold, his eyelids try 
With eyelids trying, you know what that means? Let me give it to you what it means. He's giving you this look like it's to squint. <laughs> Do not give your children sugar. Gummy bears, sugar. <laughs> Junk food of other sorts uh, that come in cracker form, uh, fishies, whatever. Please don't give them that before they come to church. Soda. Some people give their children. I was like, the other night I was walking with a child, and I'm saying, Lord, what's going on here? Because it, it feels, you know, I'm like, is this spiritual or what? And the Spirit of the Lord said, sugar. <laughs> and I said to the person, his child it was, I said, are you giving your child sugar before you come to the meeting? And they go, yeah. We're going to stop it, though, from, not, from here on in. <laughs> Yeah, that isn't a good thing to do. It's going to work counter to behavior, sitting still. We're going to have to get things in order that much more around here. It's going to have to have the nursery for the unruly kids, beginning with my grandchildren who are unruly. And then they're going to have to have a meeting up there that's going to produce that which will result in them being able to sit in church and behave. Amen? And not, once again, a cookie and crackers and juice and Kool-Aid and here's some more gummy bears and here, how about some more something to stuff into your natural appetite so that you can curb any desire for the spiritual. Are you listening to me? Yeah. should be the other way around. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're just going to earnestly contend to get things right in the place, get things right in the house. Try it sometime. Try, try flowing in the Holy Ghost when everybody's, when the kids from the front to the back are just absolutely look like they've got to be peeled off the ceiling. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, living God. Sudarita si para nako prosi pikiya totoro lo basi prata mano matikisti. Subambre de kita la makaya. You know, they're, they're, the Holy Ghost is making a real simple call. He's, he's, calling, he's, calling you to, he's calling you to forsake the things that you've been living in and doing and come follow Him. Forsake the things that you're doing with your life that have nothing to do with flowing and moving and walking and living in the Holy Ghost. Now, come on, people. Quit playing pretend. Let's get real. I mean, some of you, if you paid a person full time to walk around with you and tell you every time you're being negative, having doubt, or not walking in the Spirit, they would have a full time job on their hands. Especially if they were going to help you understand what is your proper behavior and response. You know what's the good news? God the Holy Ghost has come to do that. It's a job that he's come to do. Because, you know, you can hear people say, oh, I wish I had that. You have that. You have that. God, the Holy Ghost has come to do that, and no one can do it better. But how long will you turn a deaf ear unto him? How long will you give him the back? Jesus said, I, the Lord said, I came to you constantly, lifting, stretching my arms out towards you. And you gave me your back. You turned away from me. Jesus. I pray tonight that your heart will become so moved by the Holy Ghost that you'll begin to have a burden for a lost and dying world, a generation that lacks a witness. Pentecost, it seems to be almost like a fire that's going out. Very few people that are contending contending for the faith and ministering to the flame of the Spirit. People who want to walk out their life on a daily basis, not flowing in the Holy Ghost or walking in the mind of the Spirit or living out the Word of God at all. You'd be barely able to have evidence to prove that you're walking and flowing in the Holy Ghost because really one of the primary proofs is what's coming out of your mouth and the deeds and the action, the concerns of your heart and where your disposition is. This is the proof. 
But we're just going to have to be willing to get honest and quit defending and trying to protect our own, guard each man's pride. And we don't even want that. Huh? And it's to get real, so real with God here tonight. That we say we're looking one, praise God. Pastors ask us that we're going to start having a prayer meeting on Friday night. And this is really going to truly be a prayer meeting. And it's a prayer meeting that you've been praying, that you're praying to come to. It's a prayer meeting. It's not a prayer meeting that finally, after all week, you finally got an opportunity to come to prayer. It's a prayer meeting that you're giving yourself to every day. And you're saying, Lord, we want to see the outpouring of your Holy Spirit in the midst of our lives. We want to see your church called the abiding place begin to flow and function and the authority of heaven we're tired of singing songs we're tired of just all the other stuff we want to flow with the holy ghost we're tired of disgruntled faces and disgruntled opinions because it, it, it displays the antichrist not the christ it drives people away it doesn't call them in it's a false representation of what it means to be born again God says, get in or get out. Amen. But don't be lukewarm because you're misrepresenting me. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. You're not being a light into the world. You're being a misrepresentation, a false witness. You're driving people away. You don't go in yourself and those who would come in. You're preventing because of the look on your face, because of the attitude in your heart, because of the disposition of your life. Hear this. Because people don't want to hear that about themselves. They want to hear it about the Pharisees that lived 2,000 years ago. better get real with God because you're running out of time. Get real with God, you're going to have his results. Period. Automatically. Default. God's, going to, God's coming through every time. Man, don't come through every time. God's coming through every time. You do what he says, you will have his results. You don't have his results, understand you're not doing what he said. You can self-justify if you want. You can pretend. You can complain. You can murmur. You can say, I disagree and be that disconnected person who's fully independent, the eyeball on the other side of the room. But I think better things of you. Look, there is no reason, there is no reason, there is no reason with the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the house, with the love of God in the place, with the gifting of miracles, signs, and wonders, there's no reason, there's no reason why the gifting in your life cannot be matured. There's no reason why the music can't go to another level, why your praise can't become more excited, why the anointing of the Holy Ghost can't be more manifested and demonstrated, why more souls can't continually be coming into this place, why, this, why, why, the, why the outdoors cannot be absolutely where we have to have church because it can't be contained in here. I just was given a f brand new 5,000 square foot tent. So some of you got to start finding out where we're going to set it up. I'm just giving a brand new 5,000 square foot tent. So I, start, so I started talking about tent, going around to set up a tent. I was just giving a 5, 000, brand new, brand new 5,000 square foot tent. It's probably worth 50, 60,000 bucks to go get her done. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're five, 50, 6, 000, 50 to 60,000 dollars in the plus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, come on, we'll just, you're going to have to flow in the Holy Ghost, otherwise you're going to fish all night and catch nothing. Otherwise you're going to talk a bunch of people and they're just going to walk around totally disinterested. Huh? Otherwise you're going to talk a bunch of people and find no one interested and become discouraged. Let's be the church. The church is the fullness of Him that filleth all things. Do not be willing to be, let it be anything less. If you're a musician, get passionate with your music. Listen to me. If you're a musician in this place, you ought to be on the platform with your instrument. You ought to be here on so. You ought to be here as so on Saturday nights. And if you're not, that means that's just a proof that you don't care about the church. Just a proof that you don't care about increase. I'm just telling you. You better get. You better get busy. Because gun, you, you can't say that there is value in the fact that you occupy a chair. Oh, look at all I'm doing. I'm occupying the chair. Can you hear me? 
Father is going to sort you out now in this place. Because he's called you to greatness. And if you're willing to live out a life of mediocrity, it shows that your heart's not right. That you don't care about what he wants. You care about what you want. Why don't you care about what he wants from here on in? He's called you to realms of glory and honor. He's called you to greatness. He's already empowered you. He's not going to make, you know, it's like we pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you almost got to reach over there and move their mouth up and down for them. Reach in, tick their tongue, go up and down in their mouth, huh? And slap on their throat. As though you're supposed to do it all for them. No, you're going to have to start moving some of your members, your faculties. Hallelujah. 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 Pat had an altar tied to him the other night and said, this is one of my faculties. It's one of my members. That's good. That's good. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, go ahead and throw a fit. Go ahead and throw a fit. Because it was taken away from you, that which you wanted. Go ahead and throw a fit. For <laughs> Jesus. I'm so used to it in the church. I just figure I should just go ahead and just call it out tonight. Whether it's, whether it's an 18-month-old, which we can tolerate to some degree. Or if, how old are you? How old are you? When are you going to obey? When are you going to take your life and come and submit it to the church? Listen to me. When are you going to take your life, your talents, your ability, your, your being, and you come and submit it to the church? When? When? Submit it to the church. To submit it to Jesus Christ. To the functioning and the revelation of who he is. Because he's not manifested outside of his church. The church is his manifest person in the earth today, period. I was going to go through all the verses of Scripture for that, but you, most of you already know them. I mean, I would just be going over ground that has already been covered umpteen times and still been completely neglected. And I don't care. It doesn't matter to the Lord how much head knowledge we have, how much we've heard, how much memory we, re how much we retain in our memory. It has, it, it, what matters to him is what we're saying and what we're doing. And I want you to stand with me. And I want you guys to work on that, okay? You guys work on this, okay? Don't go now. No, after this long of time, after all we've been through, and it's the altar time now, this is the most important time. This right now is the most important time in the meeting, the altar time. This is it. We're bringing you to a place a truth. We're bringing you to a place of commitment and consecration. And I've got to think about here, people, what's going to happen in this place with me gone for 30 days? You've got to understand, we're, my dilemma. And I want you to get real tonight. I want you to get real. I, don't, I know, I know what's going on in your life. You can play, play pretend and run and hide under a bush, go behind the, you know, go behind the trees when the voice of the Lord is speaking. doesn't matter. We already saw your nakedness. We already know what's going on. You're not hiding anything. You're not playing pretend. You can't hide your head behind somebody else and act like somehow we're going to not notice you. What is important is you come look at us eyeball to eyeball and say, you know what? I've not been doing what's, I've not been doing the right thing. I've been doing stuff my own way. I'm not, I'm not submitted myself to the church. I'm offended when you tell me the problems in my life. And I don't want to live this way anymore. I want to understand what it means to get connected. I want to understand what it means to come under authority. I want to understand what it means to honor Jesus and honor those whom the Lord has anointed over me. Because if I don't honor them, I'm never going to connect.
And I'll just tell you right now, this is the way I believe it because it's the way the Bible teaches. If you cannot connect with the pastor in the house, you cannot connect with Jesus. Because he is his instrument. It is the authority in the house. And I'm not, and I'm just tell you right now, I want you to understand this. I am not interested in anybody else's opinion because it's nothing but a demonic demon of hell's opinion fighting against the church. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that there will be a people that will become so zealous for the things of the Lord that people with these kind, contrary demonic doctrine opinions will have no find no place in among us. And as a result, I'm going to tell you right now, the thousands and the tens of thousands and the hundred thousands are coming rushing into the kingdom. The, he the music up here will become heaven and I won't have to feel this and that and conflicting mixture up here. Don't come up here unless you submitted to the place. Come up with your bad attitudes. Don't you come up here on the platform with me with bad attitudes. Don't you come up here. You have no right here. It's holy ground. And all you gotta do is cause yourself problems. You better be very careful. You're trading, treading upon a holy ground. When you walk into his church, you're treading upon the holy ground. And the responsibility that's on your shoulders is a great responsibility. It's a beautiful privilege to be anointed of God. It's a beautiful privilege to be baptized in his glory for every one of us to be baptized out into one body, the very person of Jesus Christ, by one spirit. You have to submit yourself to that. It is an act of consecration when you walk into the place, for we all baptize into one body by one spirit. That is something that some people think happens one time. That happens every time you come into the building and you better get your mind right. You better understand the mind of Christ that is taught to you by the word of God and start submitting yourself to him. You better. You better. Because you're going to be held accountable for the sacred things that Father's privileged us. He's withheld nothing from us. Freely he's given to us all things. He spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all. How much shall he also by him also give us free things? Freely, all things. The Lord Jesus has washed and cleansed the church in his own blood. He's presented unto himself a glorious church that is perfect, having no spot nor blemish. That means to be perfect. It is an Old Testament terminology related to the sacrifice that is absolutely tamim, perfect. It is that perfect offering without blemish and without spot that can be used now as the offering. The one that the Lord will cause his fire to fall upon. The one that the angel ascends up into heaven through. You understand? It says, lo, the transport area. You with me, understand? It's the ascension into a heavenly realm. It's the open door offering. It's the offering of fellowship and the offering of communication and interaction. You hear me? What's going on right now, at this moment in time, is more sacred than all of it. It's more sacred than all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just turn your heart towards heaven. I promise you, you listen to me. If you flow in the anointing, you can change the atmosphere of your children's life, of your workplace, 
with your house. I promise you. I promise you. Of a generation. Of a people group, of a society, of a culture. I promise you. I promise you, dear people, I promise you. If we'll just take and we'll open up the Bible. You know what I know right now? I know that the Lord wants to bring prophecies forth right now. I know that. Because it's so important to Him that He makes so much room for it. He says, you may all prophesy one by one. He so wants to do it. Our culture has moved us away from the kingdom. It has moved us into a fixed structure that is purely, almost purely human. It's based upon, oh, I'm afraid it won't work out. I'll sound awkward. That's all pride of life stuff. That's all self-preservation stuff. That's because you constantly boister the wrong realm in your life. Father's calling you tonight, and I'm, I want you to be encouraged, and I want you to be emboldened, but you're going to have to understand at the same time the things that have been doing, you've been doing wrong has got to be stopped. Yes. Otherwise, you can never do it right. Yes. And it begins by your connection. Yes. It bring, begins by connectivity with the Lord. Yes. It begins by the way that you hold the head, the way you honor Christ Jesus, the way you esteem Him, the way you look to Him, the way you honor Him, the way you respond to Him. That's what holding the head means, the way you look to Him, the way you esteem Him, the way that you honor Him, the way you respond to Him. I'm looking to Him for, what do I do now, Lord? Yes. I'm going to tell you right now, Christy, this will be amazing in your life. If you just constantly, and everybody, listen to me, if what you'll just do is you just say, Lord, I'm looking to you for instruction. What should I do now? And it's not like you just have to stop, but you're just acknowledging him. And you just do it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a recipient of this because I prayed over and again throughout my life, Lord, I want to function in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits. And I just simply say, and then I come to a place where, Lord, I thank you for the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, for miracles, gives of healing. I'll get in the context of ministering to people and the words of knowledge just flow. And it's, I mean, people are asking questions and I'm answering them. Just some flowing in the Holy Ghost. Someone, I was in a meeting, someone just had walked into the place and had asked the pastor before he'd come in evidently and said, I, I feel like that the Lord's laying on my heart to fast for 30 days. And the pastor said, well, pray about it. He came into the meeting and I said, some of you in here right now, the Lord's dealing with you to fast for 30 days. And like they're going, no, it's just flowing in the anointing because that's what's going on. In fact, everything I'm saying is just the same way. It's just it would mean more for you, to you, if you would have just asked that question. Yeah. It's true. I'm telling you the truth. Yes. Yes. And then when I tell you something that you don't want to hear because you don't want to do it, then it, gets, then it works just the opposite. You listen what I'm saying? Yeah. For this guy, it brought faith. Because he just said, ask the question, ask the pastor. Here's what we're saying. There's so many of the words dealing with you to fast 30 days. Boy, just ignited faith. Now I'm going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. Now it works just the opposite. It becomes a stronghold in your life because you just, you're not willing to obey. But I told you, out of the word of the Lord, exactly the same word of the Lord on the same level that God requires of you. Might as well open your eyes because closing them ain't going to do you much good. Because you can't hide from what's going on in here. Yeah. You can't hide from what's going on in here. You close your eyes later. You ain't hiding. You don't want to hide. Because you don't want what you got. Yeah. If you satisfied with what you got from heaven, it's just a proof and an evidence to some seriously out of whack in your life. When God has made available to us, Look, I mean, come on, think about it, son. God has made it available to us that we can be participating with heaven's orchestra. With a sound 
that is so, that, that fills the atmosphere and, and causes people to fall and collapse under the anointing of the Spirit of God. We have to contend for that. We can't be dissatisfied with something. We're not here to just do something, what will work, what will fit, what will, what will, what will do. Too many people live their life, and I love to use it for music because it's so quantifiable. What will do? Will this satisfy? I'm showing up. You should be real happy. No, the Lord didn't just say that in his word. Oh, we're really happy that you showed up. For the body of Christ, there's people showing up. That's not what he said. For the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is people showing up and tolerating the meeting. If I allow you to leave this place tonight like you came in and the way that you've been living, I have no right to preach, to minister to things of the kingdom. And if you should be willing to allow yourself to continue on in the same stuff that you've been in, huh? then your heart's not right with God. And you can self-justify all you want. Ain't nothing going to change the reality that you need to change. Listen, quit preserving your own life because you're not willing to be vulnerable. Stop closing off your heart because you don't want to be corrected because you were abused or whatever. Get yourself open and get ready to be smacked. Because God said, listen to me, what, I'm going to listen to me. The Lord says he chastens every son he receives. And he says he flogs them. And that word is the same word that was used for Jesus at the whipping post. He flogs disobedient children. He flogs them. Yeah. Go read Hebrews chapter 12 again. Go read Hebrews chapter 12. Quit hiding. Open yourself to correction and start being an obedient child. Come on, it's about time that we have the right heart. Look, listen, listen to Habakkuk. I will go up in that place, in that realm of interaction with God in my high place and see what the Lord will say when he rebukes me. Understand that. I'm looking for correction. I'm looking for instruction. I'm looking how to understand how to do it right, how to cooperate with God. This is bigger than you and me, people. This is about Christ Jesus. This is bigger than you and me. This is about the kingdom of God. It's about the representation of who he is in heaven and his love for humanity. This is, this is bigger than you and me. It's about millions of souls. It's about billions of souls. It's a, if, we just lo, if, we just lo, if we just localized it, it's about three million, over three million right here. I wouldn't respond to that. I would just worship the Lord. I wouldn't even respond to it anymore, honestly. Just let it go. It's a manifestation looking for some attention. It's the devil. The more you, the more you respond to him, the more he acts up. The more you attention you give the powers of darkness, the more they act up. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And none to do but cast them out, rebuke them strongly, amen? amen. And be done with it. Yeah. Amen. amen. Be done with it. Yeah. And if you still hear them howling, laugh. See, Katara Masaya, Tierra Matia. Tonight, tonight. God is calling you. God is calling you. I, I praise God that every one of you know how to release and, 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 and flow in the, in the tongues of fire. And I'm going to tell you something. It is just as easy for you to begin to flow in prophecy. Just as easy for you to begin to flow in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Just as easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as easy. 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 Don't, don't, don't pay any attention to her. Forget about it. 
Let the manifestation come. Let the devil come out. I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Let the thing fully manifest. Let it fully manifest. Come on, go ahead, create an atmosphere. Hallelujah. Go ahead, create an atmosphere of heaven. Today, tonight, Father says, if any man will hear his voice and harden not his heart, this is what he will do. He will show forth his power. He will show forth his glory. He will show forth his rest. He will show forth his inheritance. He will show forth the signs. He will show forth the wonders. He will make known his power in the midst of a broken, in the midst of a sinful, in the midst of a crooked, crooked world. He will bring down the stronghold of every mind-blinding spirit. He will bring down the stronghold of every opposing force of darkness. He will bring down the high looks of men. Now listen to me. It's just like I said a few minutes ago. It's time for Beba to prophesy. I was telling you because the spirit of the prophet is here. I can be the only one to prophesy if you just are willing to continue on the way you are. But if you'll take a hold of the reality of Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, that he poured out a spirit upon all flesh so that your sons and daughters might prophesy. And you begin to hook up with these things. And you begin to get zealous about these things in God. I'm telling you, that same kind of thunderous thing that just came out of my mouth will come out of your mouth. And as we do, I'm going to tell you, the body will begin to be built up. It will begin to be, the manifest power of God will become so strong in this place. I promise you that Christ Jesus will be manifested and His glory will be seen and revealed in a place where His people know how to connect together with one another and be under the authority and leadership and headship of the man Christ Jesus. You need to ignore it. And then take it to the take it to the behind it. Ma Ramonde. Pacaribare si prada la vada redea. Rama Mandara Mama Shiprataya. Oh God, we pray that your son Jesus will be manifested and revealed. Oh God, we pray that the glory of heaven will shake the place. God, we pray that each man will find, each woman will find, each boy, each girl will find this place of living and abiding in your glory. And you don't need to come up here. You stand right wherever you're standing, right wherever you're seated. And you're going to begin to let the power of God flow. This Friday night, this Friday night, we're going to just come in here and we're going to give ourselves to this. Uh, minister a little bit on it. You have to know how to be instant in season and out of season. You have to understand how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. 
You have to understand how to respond to the Spirit of the Lord that has been poured out upon all flesh. We're, de we're devoted to modeling it every time we come to the meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't, you're, not, you're not lacking a model of it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you just start imitating it. If you, don't, if you do not honor the anointing, if you do not honor the word, if you do not honor the man, if you can go on in defiance and say, I don't have to listen, I don't believe it that way, I don't agree with it, then you'll never connect with Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. And you'll always run ruin in the midst of the church, wherever you go. And I say that to a few people here tonight. By the Spirit of the Lord, you get your heart right. There's a couple of people in here tonight. You're not willing to be very, you're not willing to be vulnerable. You're not willing to be transparent. You're not willing to, to bow before correction. You guard yourself against correction. And it's time you quit hanging on to yourself. It's time. Do you get rid of your defeated mentality that someone's always picking on you and recognize that God's trying to get a hold of you? You listen to me. I'm, listen, this is my job. And I'm going to do my job because I am zealous about what Father has put in my heart and my life for His glorious church. Yeah. Understand, I'm going to say it one more time. The church is much bigger than an individual, much bigger than me, much bigger than you. We're not going to dance to your tune. We're not playing patty cake with your devils. And we're not babysitting your mediocrity. We're going to go ahead and yield to God the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be what he described. Yeah. And be what he described. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. The world is wandering out there waiting to see such a splendor in the heavens. You and I are a big part of the signs and the wonders in the heavens. The world out there is waiting to see the great light. Ain't nobody ever put up a great light that everybody didn't come gaze at it. Look at 4th of July. People come out like a bunch of little kids. Look at the lights go off. They'll come and look at the sign. They'll come and look at the sign. It's time. It's time that this yoke be broken. I will not leave here tonight thinking that somebody is holding on to that yoke and is going to come back here and, and, and mess the whole program up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know you're healed. So good to have Catherine in the meeting up in Jackson, Georgia. Saturday morning, the fire guy came down that place. I was amazed that you could have such a big church and the fire guy come down the that like that. It was amazing. By Saturday night, the pastor and his wife were in the altar, weeping crying out to God. Come on, man. It don't take, it doesn't take a dozen meetings. Two meetings. It doesn't take a dozen meetings. But if you resist the Holy Ghost, you're just going to get your hard heart and you're going to mess the whole program up. Tonight, I want you to get broken before God. I want you to just Brokenness is just simply saying, Lord, bend me. I'm not going to be that way anymore. You know, brokenness is let the brokenness is let let is saying, let the floodlight of heaven shine upon my soul. And I'm going to come up to the pastor and I'm going to tell him, you speak into my life and you correct me, and it don't matter what it looks like, you bring it down. And you know what? I have people come up to tell me that. But everybody who comes up to tell me that are the people that didn't need to tell me that. And that's just the virtue of it.
And I could have a communion service where basically before I give communion, I just make it a requirement that you tell me that. And before I serve you communion, I read you the riot act and just let you know. And bring it all down and say, this is what's going on in your life. And it's time for it to come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, I, and then we watch a, super, a true, true, sincere brokenness happen in your life before we give you communion. And that's what God would be pre pleased with. That's what the Holy Ghost would be pleased with. Because Christ Jesus stands in the midst of his church and he's got a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth and his eyes are a flame of fire. And he said, I tried your works and I found them that they are not perfect. And you better repent till I come and, or I come and fight against you with a sword of my mouth. And people don't believe it that way because they're under a demon power called secular humanism. You need to go back and read the Bible. That's why we want people in this place reading the Bible all the time so God can correct them. Tonight, change comes in this year. Tonight, I pronounce to you by the Spirit of the living God, I pronounce to you by the Spirit of the living God, that God the Holy Ghost will burn among us as a fire. You listen to me. Don't shout yet. Don't shout yet. Don't shout yet. God, the Holy Ghost, will moon, burn among us as a fire to the good for those who are obedient and to the bad for those who refuse. I'm going to tell you right now, the fire of God comes. The Holy Ghost fire comes beginning with me, beginning with me, and burns to reveal and try every man's work. And it is a blessing and a glory to those who be obedient and honest and sincere before God. But it is a devastation to those who refuse to obey and hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Do you believe me? Yes. Yes. I wasn't asking for your response. I'm just telling you, you believe me. These are the days that the works of God and the judgments of God will be seen in this house. These are those days that the Ananias and Sapphires and those who hold back the truth of what God has pledged and that sacred thing and that pledged thing and that holy thing from the Lord will understand the judgments of God in this house. Because I see the Lord Jesus Christ burning with a zeal for the lost. I see it. And he's not willing to allow the places. You know what? Over and again, the enemy has fought against the anointing in this house and run interference against the anointing in this house that is a solution, a remedy, and a cure for a lost and dying world they're hungry to see. And Papa's not going to allow the interference no more. Amen. He's not going to allow it no more. I don't know how it's all going to work out, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm prophesying to you, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost declaring these things through me that there is, there's no more the enemy going to be able to set assignments against this glory and try to shroud it. Because people aren't interested truly in being a part of it. I'm going to tell you, when you're not willing to be obedient to God, you are actually opposing the work of God. And it's about time people fear. Amen. Hook up in faith and believe that the meetings can't happen in this building anymore. Amen. Hook up in faith. Now, I want you to hook up in faith. Amen. I'm not talking about you running outside. I mean, I praise God for the faithful people who's always willing to go do something and, and participate. I'm talking, but, but not really filled with... The, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire that's going to get the job done. Okay? I want you to hook up in prayer and touch heaven to where a place of, of breaking forth because you start seeing the you start seeing glory. You know, think about it. Evan Roberts led a revival. There was probably a dozen people less in that meeting. They weren't going out in the streets. They weren't going out in the streets or nothing. They touched heaven. They got connected. They touched heaven. They got connected. They touched heaven. And inside of six months, 100,000 people had come into the kingdom. They, they, they had to move out of that building. They met, went into the, to, to a bigger meeting hall and the place was constantly packed out. Because somebody, some people touched heaven. There's more than a dozen people here. 
We've got to quit playing games. Quit trying to get God to bless our, to bless our way. I want you to get serious with me. While I'm, while I'm ministering out there, running to Asia and Africa, I want you to get on your face before God. I want you to begin to cry out to God. I want you to let God, the fire of the Holy Ghost fall upon you. So I begin to, so I begin to move into the deepest part of your emotions and beings and desire and passion and, and plan to see that parking lot filled with people. Because we can't have the meeting in here. We can't have the meeting in here. There's too much love. I, I got to see a model of it. I'm telling you right now, the Lord touched me because we walked into a, a, a large meeting. It was well over a thousand people. And I'm telling you, Phil Cameron was with me, sitting beside me. He said, I see warring angels over this place. And Phil Cameron, he comes from the Camerons and Roy Turner and people that wrote the songs, those old songs, the Holy Ghost set my feet to dance and all those songs. And he said it right, because I could feel the force of hell against the place. Huh? It was tough, wasn't it? But what we watched happen inside of just a few short hours, the love of God set down in that place. Was that amazing? It was, um, it was thick of how the power of God, I got to see the display of the power of God captivating 1,000 people and changing the dynamics, more than 1,000, and changing the dynamics of the atmosphere. It will, it, I'm going to tell you, there, there, this is easy stuff for the Holy Ghost to do. You got to you got to start flowing with them and cooperating with them and stop minding earthly things and allowing unholy thoughts and allowing contrary ideas to run your mind and run your life when God the Holy Ghost is supposed to be running it. I just know I just over and again I find I go places and I find how easy it is to see crowds of a thousand and ten thousand people inside of a week. And it's not hard for God to do it here. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to get on your face and you're going to have to find out what's happening. Are you a blockage or are you a participant? Yeah. you got to find that out. you got to get real with God. Yes. You can't have a defeated attitude and a poor old me attitude. Yeah. It's a soul searching, I'm going to get right with God attitude. Yeah. I'm going to get searched out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm changing. I want to be a part of this great and glorious thing that God is doing by His Spirit in the earth. That's what it's about. It's not about you being excluded. It's about you being included. It's about you getting a hold of that which Father wants to do through your life. But you've got to get serious. It's got to become the most important thing to your life. And I believe that, I believe with all of my heart. There's not a person in here that's not serious. You've just not understood how to deal with demon power. You've just not understood how to deal with offenses. You've not had understood how to deal with unforgiveness. You've not understood how to deal with distractions. The Father's simply saying, connect. He's just simply saying for you to understand how to come into a place of an agreement. And then you'll know. Then you'll know. There's, there's enough anointing to reach all the way from the wall, one wall to the next, to every soul in this place, to where that you and I can become that which the fire of God will fall upon, every one together in, in agreement, in one accord. Everybody there minding the same thing, speaking the, the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's Father's, Father's, it's the Pentecostal. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the Pentecostal sacrifice. It's the, the church of Jesus Christ yielded, ready, for the, ready to move, because God's going to move. God's getting ready to move in a big way, people. God's going to move in a big way. God, the Holy Ghost, whew, he's going to be moving in, he's going to move in a big way in the United States of America. He's going to move in a big way throughout the world, but it's going to happen in a great way. And we, listen, come on now. There is no reason that the Abiding Place Ministry shouldn't be at a place of seeing over a thousand souls come into the kingdom in a very short period of time. There's no reason. 
There's no more important time than right now, at this very moment. Listening to what God is saying. Responding to this voice. Right now, right here. He's here as the water covers the sea. He's here with his love. He's here with his conviction. He's here with his divine ability. He's here with his divine power. He's here with his mercy. He's here with his grace. He's here with his goodness. He's here with everything that we need. Father's rejecting nobody. but calling everyone come and be a part. Let there be a consecration and a dedication from the platform all the way to the very back wall. From the platform all the way back there to the sound system. Everything in between. You take your life your skills, your abilities, your talents, that which you have. And you come and you lay them at the Lord's feet. You come and you make them available and you put them to work in the midst of his church. You let every part of your life be searched out by God, be committed and consecrated by God by the acts of your deeds and by the response of your heart. Because you can't have anything less and have a real response to the invitation that the Lord has made for us to be part of His being. His being. His body. His being. His very being. Whew. Amen. Amen. That is the cry of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what the Lord is saying. And there's a message in tongues. I can actually hear it. And I, I, I've, I've heard it for so many years in this place and not called it out. I've called, tried to call it out. And it's time for you to be, understand how to respond to it. It's here. It's here. The presence of the, the anointing is here. The miracle power of God is here. It's here. And you must become alive to it. I command you now in the name of Jesus Christ to become alive to it. Become alive to the moving of the Spirit. I can hear the message in tongues. I can hear it. I could, I could actually speak it out right now. It's a message in tongues. Hallelujah.
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hear it. See, hear it. Can you hear the interpretation? Hear the crying of the Spirit. Hear the servant of the Lord, the Most High, who, who beseeches you, who beckons you, who cries out earnestly, pleading with you to come over into a realm. Keep going. Keep going. Keep loud. Get, get loud with it. A realm in which he is prepared, a realm in which he's made entrance for each man. No one's been left out. No longer. Be clouded by your own interest. Now the thing about it is, she's still in the message right there. And that, this is what the Lord says to do. He wants to produce within us according to his divine order, tongues and interpretation of the Lord, tongues, that is done decently and in order. And you know, it was so strong in this place that I was holding back from speaking it out. And as soon as I saw the anointing, there was no way that, that Deborah would be able to resist. So that you saw, she didn't know how to respond. So you just heard the cry. But all she had to do was respond to the tongues because the anointing was on her. And then I, I went ahead with, started with the interpretation of tongues. But I want you to understand the gift is here. It's here. It's present in here every time that we meet. And it's time that God's people understand how to connect. It's time that you understand that if you're not connecting, it's your own fault. It's not God's fault. It's something that's going on in your heart, not God's heart. It's something that's going on in your life, not somebody else's life. And today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for everyone who's willing to repent and bow before God, I tell you, you're released to begin to flow and function, operate in the Spirit, so that we can begin to see in this place the church of the Lord Jesus Christ rise up and begin to function with power. With power and authority. Listen to me. The fear and the intimidation that has ruled over Southern California, the fear and the intimidation that has been levied against the church and been levied against God's people so that they're not allowed to talk about the things of God supposedly in the school and not allowed to talk about things of God supposedly in the realms of work. I'm going to tell you right now, it is trying to move on over into the realms also of the church and the congregation and it's about time that God's people take a hold of the valiant anointing of the Spirit of the Lord and begin to stand up and boldly speak forth the word of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, no longer will you live under that spirit of fear. No longer. No longer in the name of Jesus will you live under the spirit of intimidation. I believe that there is a great love and yieldedness and submission to love in this place. That there is a connectivity and there is a covenant that is here in this place. And it's time now to understand how to move forward in the things that God has already established in your life and get past all the stuff that's tried to stop you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Robo prapaha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Mandara Masete. Hallelujah. Ura Baba Siki Tarara Bashiki Pratana. Ivre Baman Bredita Romondan de Redeki Aranda de Boshiki Taraha. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if there's anybody sick in the place right now, I want you to come. If you're sick, you come. If you're sick, come now. Especially if there's people in here that are sick and, you, and you've been prayed for and you haven't been healed. 
And we're going to let this, we're going to let the gifts of healing work in this place. Is this everybody? Just lift your hands towards heaven. Anybody sick in this place, you come. Who was the first person up here? Jason was the first person up here. I'm going to pray for him first. What's wrong with you? You got a cold sure. of some sort. Some sort. <laughs> well, you think it's something else? I don't know. Sure. I don't think it's something else. I'm just going to cough a cold of some sort, yeah. Well, what <laughs> was it that specifically you would like God to do? I, I wanted to go away. <laughs> you want what to go away? <laughs> the cough, cold, whatever. Okay, well, fine. Then we know <laughs> we're, we're going somewhere here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to be healed right now. I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Who was second, you reckon? Just trying to keep it in order. Hallelujah. You're good. What's wrong? Some kind of old cold. Okay. Just try to stand on your feet as long as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'll drive that thing right out of you. Hallelujah. And you be healed. Amen. Don't disappoint God and stay sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. What's wrong? Run just at your hands towards heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I commend this cough and this infection. Go out of your body. Hallelujah. Be healed now in Jesus' name. What's wrong with you? You have an allergy? You reckon you're going to get healed this time? Yes. yes. Okay, well, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command to speak to you. Be healed. Receive right now into your body. Receive right now. Healing into your body. Hallelujah. What's wrong over here? Sniffles and cold? Huh? Little one? And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak healing in baby's body. I command to heal that drive out the sickness and disease in Jesus' name. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm getting ready to come to a point where I'm not going to do this anymore. Somebody else who's going to flow in the gifts of healing is going to do this. I'm looking right now for a couple of people and thinking about a couple of people at this moment. Hallelujah. And the way you begin to, you know what? Uh, Pastor Harold, Pastor Harold, he said to me, comes to me, says, I want you to forgive me for following you around and watching so close, but I learned a long time ago that if I watch people moving in the gifts of the Spirit, it just gets, I, I can, I, and I do exactly what they do, just, 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 just past Sunday, that it begins to work in a better, in a more effective manner. So I'm just looking for people who are looking to imitate. That's all. Looking for people for, who just, they're very focused. They're very, very focused on what's going on. They're, they're very standing there. They're just very, very connected. Huh? Because it's true. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a hunger. What's wrong, dear? Completely overwhelming migraine all the way down to my neck. Migraine all the way down to your neck? Sore throat, infection in your body. I drive it out right now in the name of Jesus. I drive it out right now in Jesus' name. I command go from you. Look at me. Don't close your eyes. Look at me. I command to go from you now. Look at me. It leaves your body. You just receive. 
because you know he's healing you. If you don't know he's healing you or you don't know he wants to heal you, it's very hard to receive. But when you know he's the healer and that he wants to heal you, it becomes so easy to receive. When you know you want, he wants to touch you and you want to touch him so bad, it's so easy to receive. So right now, just put your hand on your chest right there. So right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your touch. I'm just so blessed tonight with those of you who begin to prophesy and begin to move in the spirit. And I want you to, I want you, I don't want you to ever stop. And I want everyone, I want everybody else to just catch up and recognize that God's order is so much so that that be happening, that he's, that he said in his word with emphasis, you may all prophesy one by one. He just doesn't want everybody prophesying at one time because when the spirit of prophecy comes, you could do that. You could do it because it just comes with a rushing wind. You learn how to be sensitive to it. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay. I just want you to, just want you to learn how to receive. Good. Every bit of fear has to leave you now. Look at me. Every bit of fear has to go. Every sense of hurt and rejection has to go. Has to go, has to leave you. Those things that keep you from receiving, you know. Tokia cannot. Tokia cannot. Tokia cannot. You go free from it now in the name of Jesus. You release from it now. There's no struggle. You don't have to go searching around in a dark room trying to find a coin. You just receive. You just hear it. And you just hear it. The Lord's touching you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Brutana, she keeps the date. Now. So, how are you doing? You don't look that good. Huh? Your legs are burning? You don't have any strength? Well, then, what are you, what are you going to do now? Are you going to go ahead and receive healing? Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we drive out this affliction. We command it to go from you. I drive out this affliction that commanded to go from you. Now in Jesus' name, it can stay no longer. It has to go. I'll leave you alone. Tokara Masaya. The expectation to be healed and the expectation for a miracle is something that you want to have. 
and discourage you. The enemy, the enemy lied to you, discourage you, disappoint you to the point where you just won't expect anything good. It's hard to have a miracle there. And that can work against you in so many ways, not just in physical, in the needs for physical healing, but also in other areas too. So you just be encouraged. Don't cast away your confidence. Huh? Don't cast away your weight confidence. It's got a great recompense of reward. You've got a great payday coming. Hallelujah. Now what do you want? Yeah, just have a cold. Anyone's gone already? I command you to be healed now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. The fire of God goes right through you. The fire of God goes right through you. Now in Jesus' name. the depths of your being right now in Jesus' name. In the depths of your being right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, the she said. depths of your being right now. The depths of your being. Like a mighty wind. What's up? What's wrong? Huh? I want manifestation of my miracle. Huh? You want what? The manifestation of my miracle. What manifestation do you need? The fire to stop swelling. My heart's about to stop racing. Is your heart racing right now? What are we thanking you for the manifestation of the miracle? In Jesus' name. Put your hand in your chest. Don't close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healed, Jesus' name. Healed. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, Jesus. I give you my peace. I give you my peace. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. <laughs> Healing, touch your head. <laughs> you just receive. 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 The Lord has declared it, it's so. The Lord has declared it, it's so. So receive. Hallelujah. So, how are you doing? 
You doing good now? It all has to go, not just better, it all has to go, every bit of it. It has to leave your body. It has to obey me now. You just yield. Just yield yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we're down here. What's, what do you need? What's up? She has a runny nose. How are you doing, darling? How is, how's the baby? Lord Jesus, we thank you for touching baby right now. We drive out the sickness and the disease out of baby. We thank you for touching mama. wrong there's got to have a plague run through the house huh you guys had a plague run through the house everybody got sick huh but just be healed now in Jesus name everybody got all these colds be healed be healed be healed now in Jesus name be healed. Receive. Receive right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Now. Right now. Now. Receive. Now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Cast it on us. Be healed. What's wrong with you? What's up? Is it itchy? Sometimes. Or is it heal them right now? Gotta get off of you. Little nasty things gotta go off you. Little nasty things gotta go from you. Lift your hands right now towards heaven. There you go. In Jesus' name. Little nasty things gotta get off of you right now. Hallelujah. You just send it away. That has no permission. Nobody gave you the right to bring your stuff and move in over here. Huh? Are you with me? Are you with me? Nobody gave that spirit of affliction, torment, migraine, headache, right to come move in. Is that right? He's got to go. Every unclean spirit has to leave. God's giving you authority over it. Problem is, modern day church, many people have taken the unclean spirits that causes pain, sickness, and disease and made them something normal and everyday, natural, and ordinary, and thus there is no authority over it. It's an unclean spirit, commanded. Nobody gave it the right to come, bring its bags. You tell it to go in Jesus' name. Gave you these signs to follow them to believe in my name. You commanded to get, go, be gone. Hallelujah. Faith comes into you. Faith. Faith comes into you. Faith comes in. Look at me. Faith comes into you. 
Don't try too hard. You're trying too hard. You look like you're straining. Take kind of you. It's not performance. It's reception. It's getting something you can't have of yourself. Now who's crying? Oh. Lift your hands towards you. Come up here. Lift your hands up towards you. You need help. Are you not feeling well? Or do you touch her right now? Touch your little body. How is it every one of you have a psalm? Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I yield to you as your living Living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. 
Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight to you, Lord. As I yield to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. Tie me to the altar, the horns of the altar. Tie me tight, dear Lord. As I yield myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. As I cleave to you as your living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. How is it that you, every one of you, when you come together, you have a psalm, a hymn, tongue, an interpretation of tongue, a revelation, a doctrine? Oh, what I must say, you know, that everything be done decently and in order. Thank you, Jesus. So you begin to flow this way. You begin to be emboldened by the Spirit of the Lord. In many applications, we could say that maybe it's not the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin that is threatening us to speak no longer in this name. But it is very the prince of powers, prince of the power of darkness, God of this world, as it were, legislating such a threat. And all we got to do is begin to cry out to God and say, Father, grant that there should be signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus, by stretching forth your hand. Suddenly, the place will be shaken. You'll be filled with boldness and the intimidation and fear that has kept you back from speaking out by the Spirit will no longer be able to work against you. And when it cannot work against you in the midst of the church, it cannot work against you anywhere. When you will not allow it anymore to intimidate you and beat you down, but you will with boldness begin to rise up in that which God said in His Word. When you begin to move not in those things that you believe are right or wrong or that you believe that you can or cannot do, but you begin to move in those things which God said He's done and you said, I am a recipient of that which He has done. Yes. I've not been left out. And my goodness, if there's anything that you cannot be left out on is being a part of all flesh. Yeah. Hallelujah. So in the, name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that thing that God, the Holy Ghost, has begun and that which you've allowed now to take place tonight in a different dimension in your life, now let it begin to be perfected and now let it begin to grow because I'm telling you there's a thunderous shower of heaven about ready to fall. I'm telling you there's a song and the hymn of the Spirit that God wants to bring forth into place will outdo any song that could ever be performed and anything that could ever be written. Oh yes, because if you'll give yourself on a daily basis to be being filled with the Spirit, speaking yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, then surely you will recognize that this is the healing balm, that this is the redeeming power, that this is how to redeem the hour, that this is the means by which God will bring change in the nation and in this region that we now live in. Huh. And that thou, the sound of it will come with such great, with such great expression of the power of God in the midst of the church that everybody will know and be able to recognize that surely God is in your midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your special anointing upon Anna. Oh, Rabba Thank you, Father, for the anointing on Anna. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing on baby. Father, we thank you that no more sickness, disease, plague this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that wisdom will fill Ali's heart. Yes. And every mother's heart in this place. In Jesus' name. And every father's heart in this place. You begin to understand that if you'll move in the Holy Ghost, not in the frustration, not in the weakness, not in the di di dynamics of human response, but in the power of the Holy Ghost where you are yourself caught away and transcend beyond those things that would otherwise captivate you in the natural realm. You change the very atmosphere of your house to become a sanctuary. The peace of God will come in. The glory of God will rule the place, rule your heart, and rule your mind. It will also rule your house. People teach your children to come. Listen to this. Teach your kids, listen to this. Teach your children to come. And as little Samuel lay down in the holy place, teach your kids to come and minister to the holy and sacred things of the house. You notice Eli didn't hand Samuel a little coloring book. He was weaned at four years old. At four years old, he was given over to the house of the Lord. Come on, people. There's models for us in the Word of God that if we'll take hold of it and we'll begin to cry out to God for the wisdom and for the anointing of it and proclaim these things over our children and move in the authority and obedience to God's Word, we'll raise up Samuels in the house. We'll raise up prophetess in the house. We'll raise up men and women of God. We won't reproduce hard people, callous people who do not know how to receive from the Lord to go perpetuating religion. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is what we will do. Every man, everybody stand with me. We're going to give ourselves to these things. We're going to wait on these things. We're going to wait on these things more in the music. In the beginning of the meeting, more in the music. In the beginning of the meeting. Hallelujah. We're going to give ourselves more to this flow to where there doesn't have to be quite as much ministry of the Word because you take a hold of the Word and you do the Word. You don't have to minister so long when people are not somehow responding. But when you respond and when receiving and begin to do the things that we spend a whole lot more time hearing what God says through ex exhortation, what God through us says through revelation, through psalms and hymns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This will demand of you a greater consecration to Him. If it's real, if it's going to be what God wants it to be, and not just another form of activity, another form of religion, it demands a greater consecration. But in that consecration, you have the joy of fellowship. Listen to me. You have the joy of fellowship and relationship and the privilege then to be able to mature and the freedom to flow. You never mature unless you're active at the work. You act active at the work, then what you do is you become valiant and fight. Amen. Amen. Out of weakness you made strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want every one of you to recognize that Father's purpose for you to always bring an offering when you come before His presence. Even Saul recognized, we can't go down and see the man of God, for we have nothing to give him. His servant was with him, said, I have a quarter of a shekel, I believe it was, or it was a half a shekel. And he said, well, good, that a good that's good, that's good enough. But you'll find the model in the scripture is that every time we come around the things of God, we come with something in our hand to give. 
because we honor the things of the Spirit. We honor Him with our substance. We honor Him. And then Father takes that and that honor and that gift and that act of consecration and He multiplies it. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you sow and when you give in honor and you give in faith, when your seed is sacred and you move in, the, in, in faith to God's Word, He's going to work the miracle. He's going to work the miracle. Hallelujah. Of multiplication. You know, not worship. So just go ahead and come worship the Lord with you. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in the name of Jesus.